Good evening, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 321, and today we're being invaded by FMA Talk, if you noticed the flyer, which I thought was pretty funny and um, actually well done. Tim Hartman uh, does some incredible flyers. Uh, I think he uses, uh, actually, I'm not sure what he uses, <laughs> but we'll find that out. But great flyers nonetheless. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I really enjoy these guys um, for numerous reasons. I like their show. I like how they talk about minor needs, but also how they kind of also address stuff in the FMA as a whole. And we're going to be talking about stuff like that with specific content to some of their episodes. Um, if you do or have not, look up Tim Hartman or Dr. Tim, and you can find their episodes on there with a list in there. Um, and there, again, some really, I think, some great theme episodes as far as what they discuss. And again, not just within the realm of minor needs, but they do touch upon kind of the global FMA, if you may. So without further ado, I'm going to be bringing these gentlemen up. Hey, hey, hey guys. Hey. Thank you hey, for uh, coming on. I know you guys have been busy on the weekends and, and all that. So I appreciate you guys making time for this. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I kind of gave the, you know, you guys FMA talk and all that. And for folks that are watching, this is not going to be bio. Uh, if you would like to see episodes where their bio was covered, episode 221 for PG Ty and episode way back, 83 for Dr. Tim. Dr. Tim's been back on, but it was more in the theme episodes. But if you're really interested in his bio, episode 83 would be the one to watch for that. <laughs> And if you're watching, please tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button. So, okay. So, after my talk, I mean, um, kind of, what was the inspiration? How did how did it evolve? How did it come about? You know, what uh, what brought what brought it to uh, present day? Well, so it used to be a V bulletin. So it was an actual for you know back in the day there was a scream of digest. You know, uh, so that was a male. And Ty can tell you more about the technical aspect of that because I really don't know. That's more of a mail list. There was rec dot martial arts at one time, and a few other things. So a friend of mine, an acquaintance, um, someone became a friend of mine. Bob Hubbard came to me one day and uh, was promoting me about the hey, process. Hey, there's some static coming from you. Can, can you hear me now? I no, you, we can hear you, but it, um, I'm I'm it's static on my end. If folks are. Are you hearing the same thing or is it just me? I'm hearing the same thing. How's this? Yeah, it's like a rattly static, but. Hmm. <clears throat> let, me, let me, do you hear that microphone? I wonder if I'm on the right microphone. Uh, let me check this out. <laughs> well, you know what, let me, I gotta get my glasses. Yeah, there's a there's a settings wheel on the, on the, on your, right above your down yeah, lower picture here. here. Video, audio, default mic. How's that? Much, uh, much better. better. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm sorry, you were talking about the diet. So I want to apologize, everybody. We use a different platform. So um, when we go from one platform to another, you have to adjust to get things hooked up. So, um, so I, I started with this guy, Bob Hubbard, who's a good friend of mine. And uh, hello, Terry. Um, basically, he tried a discussion board. It didn't work. He knew he had the savvy, but not the connections. And I told him, hey, listen, you build it, I'll populate it. So martial talk is what it was. We eventually spun off. It became one of the largest martial art discussion groups in the world. Every time I did a seminar, people joined up. Hmm. So it was mostly Filipino and Kempo because I was doing seminars for Filipino martial artists and Kempo practitioners. Okay. Um, we spun off a second, or actually there was three discussion groups. Kempo Talk was so popular, made that, and then we did FMA Talk. Um, then there was an FMA Talk podcast that um, Mark Basil and Frederick... Uh, mm, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, they, they did the audio. Um, and then I'd always, I, I was doing stuff on YouTube, or I was videoing stuff on YouTube, um, or for YouTube content, I was at the world championships, did some interviews there and I liked it, but I just didn't like the delivery system. 
So um, we shut down FMA Talk completely. We archived all the information. And with this software out today, we decided to go this route specifically on Modern East. There was, uh, oh, actually, it's, well, I started off with Datsu's Corner, you know, so it was me going off on things. And unfortunately, I thought that sometimes my messages may have been tainted because of the messenger. Um, I'm very polarizing at times and recently, uh, Tuhan Bobby Ladra pointed things out that, well, the people don't, the reason why certain people don't like me is because I know the truth and the facts of the history. And it's hard to BS people when there's someone like me around the state called BS on things, which actually tomorrow night's show is going to be about that. Uh, um, so Ty and I, I had Ty on one of my shows and I'm like, dude, why don't we do this on a regular basis? Hmm. And we've got a very good chemistry. And, uh, you know, I, I <laughs> the joke is, He's the good cop, and I'm the other guy. Yeah. I like to say there's definitely a yin. I mean, what attracted me to you guys, I saw in media chemistry, there's definitely a yin-yang, lack of a better, you know, comparison or an analogy. But I think it, I think it works really well, with, you know, with you guys. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I'd like to believe that we have a, a good thing. We, I mean, we focus on modern Arnis, um, but and, – and what you – you made the comment that these things um, – apply to the greater community well i i think you saw today as i was driving home from toronto i put a little blurb about what we did up there and and today's show and what you what you mentioned on the 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 um, the pre-show the test show and really there's no problems in any martial art that's not in another martial art mm -hmm. you know so um as i said earlier i was i was um when i was driving down I, I knew all the Kempo politics. I knew a lot of the FMA politics because how many guys do you know besides Ty and I that go to other martial art events are welcome there and uh, people talk to us? It's true. You guys definitely are able to. All right. No, so yeah. we, get, we get to hear all this stuff. Now you started FMA discussion. Tell me that you don't you don't have a larger education on the inner workings of all these other martial arts, basically the politics behind. Yeah, the you know, I often allude to that. Like, while this has been an absolute wonderful experience, not only to get know about, more about systems, you know, meeting the people, you know, getting to go events and all that, but the side dishes on the back end, which I don't tend not to share to try to keep the drama out, the messages I receive and, hey, that's not true, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, so much to your point. Yeah, but the, but obviously the good definitely outweighing the bad. Yeah, yeah you know, I, listen, it, everyone has the same stuff, you know, and I think that, you know, that I, I found a good partner here in Thai with this project, you know, that, People look at the two of us and, be, and you know what? We each have our own sphere of people we know, and there's a lot in common. And between the two of us, no one thinks, hey, Chris, uh, no one thinks, and we're talking generally speaking. I mean, there's always going to be one or two individuals that'll make a comment, but as a whole, no one thinks that we're each other's, uh, um, a, each other's sock puppet. We all have our, we're all, we're, we're a pair of grown ass adults with our own damn opinion and we'll call bullshit on each other or we'll, we'll agree in principle, but we may disagree when it comes to motivation on things. Mm -hmm. I say, well, like when we watch something, well, okay. Um, I think this person may not be, okay, this something's wrong. Okay. So let's look at why something's wrong. And that's important what we have to do. So, um, well, why something's wrong is because someone may have been mis may have been misinformed. Then we do the information. We do more inf digging. So I might sit there and say, no, I know this guy. He's misinterpreting with intent versus Actually, unaware. I know or something. Okay. You know, because listen, we've, we've all been told things wrong. Oh, uh, 100%. And I don't blame someone. Like, listen, if I get something wrong, we've, we've, I have, we've talked on, uh, on one of the shows, we talked about rank certification expiring. 
our black belts expiring. And in modern Arnis, teaching was not tied as much to our our certificates of of our instructor certificates. It was tied more to our belt diplomas. And some people disagree with the whole belts um, expiration dates. And um, and after having discussion, I was always, hey, we do we do expiration dates. We've revisited that. We've modified the way our approach is, but we still go with that because that was established. And you know, and listen, and any any form of uh, any form of certification out there, you need to research. Yeah, if time goes by, and particularly if you're not if you're inactive, you're not active. Um, well, like like something silly like a driver's license. <laughs> yeah, for a reason, right? I mean, you know, yeah, so. so but but that's that's it. So the nice thing is, like Ty and I will will agree on something, but we might necessarily look at the motivation. I'm a little more cynical on things when I see things. He's the nicer of the two. So 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 PG Ty, um, and whatever rated version PG G you want to give to this. Yeah, yeah, right. he, he, <laughs> so he approaches you, hey Ty, you know we we should do this together. So. Um, Initial thoughts, uh, what'd you think about about him asking you to oh, kind yeah. of do this joint venture of FMA talk? Uh, well, so I, I've uh, talked to people one on one several times before, and I I think it's I'm a good adjunct for the conversation, but a lot of times, you as you know, you have to bring things out of people. So, I, we I actually thought it was a good idea to have two of us because we would bring things out probably a little bit more. and we could bounce uh, the other way around to stir things up as far as um, drawing things out by, you know, asking those questions or making, you know, say, Hey, does this mean, that, Oh, okay. That might mean like that. And then they'll start talking more. So I think that's worked out really well. And, and we sort of look at it as sort of the Ed McMahon type of thing. Right. So that's what I'm doing. He, he carries most of it, which is fine. Cause I love hearing all the stuff, learning it. Um, but at the same time I, I chime in when it, when it makes sense. Uh, and then I'm, then I'm in my comfort zone. He's in his and hopefully, hopefully the guests are in theirs and that's, we really want that. I can tell you, I was a guest on your, on your show. I've watched a lot of your episodes and I definitely see the harmony. I didn't see any disconnection with the guest versus you guys or you guys disconnection, <laughs> you know? So, um, well, there was Frank who thought I, I was, see, Oh, I didn't see he, that one. So. Okay. Frank thought, well, so, uh, and, and, and actually we, we did the triple threat seminar together and right. we discussed it again there. So for those who didn't see Frank was on Dean's show. Yes, he was. And really? he had someone with him, and he was so well prepared, Phil. so well prepared. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're going to do an interview on a modern army show, I'm going to ask Monterey's questions. Now, since then, what I've we've actually written up a list of questions to send people because we've always done this fairly on the cuff. And I and I don't always send that out. I still like the organic mindset, but it depends on the person I'm working with and if they're skeptical about the whole process or not, if they've seen the show. So I started asking questions like, hey, you know, I mean, so I feel like I'm being interrogated. Well, it's called an interview. The difference between this and interrogation, you're not going to do time unless we throw you in modern Arnie's prison. <laughs> well, and the other thing, I mean, it's not none of the things that we ask. We might ask direct questions and that can throw people off, but it's not supposed to be a gotcha. It's just no, kind of an honest no, discussion. You want the, I mean, you want the person to flourish in the interview. You want them to because not other people watch that. I'm going to tell you something, man. Other people watch that and be like, oh, I don't know if I want to go on that show. Right. Right. I don't know. Well, well, let's, let's, <laughs> I'll, I'll put things in a little better perspective. There's a few people out there that try to make it sound like there's no other modern learning instructors or experts out there mm. using the word expert in a loose kind of thing. And I'm trying to ask questions directly. Hey, when did you start? Oh, well, that was before this guy. How many black belts produced? Oh, wow. You produced black belts and this guy didn't produce any. Now I'm not calling these other people out, but mm. You know, but the thing here is, it some people try to make them sound themselves sound very important that no one else has done things. When I've known, when I've known for a fact, like tomorrow we're going to talk on the show, and one of the things we're going to we're talking about Remy Price's camps. So there's this misnomer that no promotions were done outside of camp. And no I actually had outside Rich of camps. Oh yeah. So, so there had to be some in the schools, right? 
I'm I've good. got a video test of me going for my third degree black belt in my own school <laughs> with a whole bunch of people there. Could, could, could and a bunch of modern the, black belts on the board. Could that fall under the umbrella of misinformed? Uh, clueless is more apt to be. I guess. <laughs> well, but no, but here's the thing. Let, let's let's be nice. And hey, Chris, how you Chris doing? Chris Nally, Kara. Hey, yep. we got Chris Acaba, who I'll be seeing this weekend. And, yes. uh, and Pete, uh, Guru Terry. All right. So let's say, okay. So one of the things I pulled out and Ty saw it, Remy made a, a blank diplomas with his and my name pre-printed on them. I've never seen any other diplomas like that. Pre-print that were pre-printed. Okay. Pre-printed. So this is like like you go to the, the modernist camp diploma. It has his his the line for his name and his name underneath. It had a line with my name underneath as well. I've never seen him do that for anybody. Okay. I was doing belt promotions in my school, but now you have someone who only who never had permission to promote people, and they only saw promotions being done at camp. Not a bad thing, but mm. that's their experience. So they go, oh, hey, we got someone from Lapu Lapu or oh, Jay, Lapu Lapu City. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. So, you know, and a lot of times what we're trying to do is not indirectly address this nonsense without calling people out specifically. Mm. You know, um, I because mean, I I've been there, you know, um, when Remy just, you know, in the seminar, boom, so-and-so is now for all the work they were doing, promoting the art, producing students, stuff like that. Today, we are promoting someone to su such and such degree. Okay, great. You know? Yeah, okay. And I've been there and seen it done. So, but if you didn't see it done, you might sit there. Oh, oh you might never doubt it. That. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's funny because, I mean, there's some, you know, like um, – you know, like when I was with Sayox, um, you the only time you got promoted was at the Sama Sama. They're kind of equivalent to a camp, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. So I know some kind of do stay in that lane. But he was so, um, I only know this by virtue of doing interviews on here. That's how I really got educated on my niece, actually in an interview with you guys, that he was so vast. There's no way, I mean, I'm guessing that the um, promotions could have been just on a camp. I mean, that guy was... I was everywhere. What, what, what about folks in Europe? Or well, or, I mean, he went. To, uh, well, that's a whole other story. Um, I mean, he would, he would do them at seminars or wherever he felt like. Uh, There's outside of even events where he's teaching, he would do them. But but he would be the only one promoting the black that I ever ran across. Well, and see now, there's two levels of promotions. Right. So, re okay. So, I will still stick with this. I because we both asked Remy the same question. Actually, I think. And Eric Alexander, the person that ties Ty and I together, um, all three of us asked Remy the same question. What level do I do I have to be to have the permission to promote people to black belt? And he said, no one has that permission. Only at that point when he was still alive could he do it. Okay. All it, right. it, so that's why I coined the phrase RPCs, Remy Price is certified. Oh, okay. that's what he that's what he said to me when I asked that question as well. And also I said, you know, who could? And, and it's it, only me. So, okay. That okay. well, makes sense. Uh, well, now, you know. some other people have said some things and they're, some of them are friends of ours and comments were made. Hey, James. But the thing here is, did a follow up question happen afterwards? Well, you can promote now. Well, to what belt level can I promote to? So I give you permission to do something to what level? Gotcha, gotcha. To me, I'm always, I was a young guy. I wasn't a black belt when I started my club. I left my instructor. Um, Remy took me on as a personal student. And I didn't want to ask for forgiveness. I preferred to ask for permission. So, um, so when something happened like this, I, I didn't want to, you know, I'm like, hey, listen, you know, I, I, I need to know what you are telling me. And a lot of, I think people misinterpreted whether it was intentionally or not. Don't know, don't care. The other thing here is, I was, um, so we were up at the event with Pintados this weekend and they're doing a documentary on him. Nice. And one of the, the, the person doing the, uh, the, the filming this was talking to me about things. And I talked about how I know, you know, you go, do you go to the Philippines? Well, that path went. I go, you know what? Um, I do now. 
uh, not for martial technique. I think the best martial arts in the world have moved to the States, unless I'm trying to track down a very specific person or piece mm -hmm. of material. Okay. If you want to do Filipino martial arts, there's no reason to leave this country. If you want to work with a specific person, well, now you just got to get a Zoom channel. Though. Uh, you know I mean? But really, there's no need. To, I mean, there's plenty of access to FMA in the States. So when I go there, it's about the culture. And I felt, you know, and, and the thing here is when I first met Remy, I, I knew of, I knew, I don't know, but I knew and I had been exposed to Japanese and Chinese culture as a primary a tertiary would have been, or secondary would have been Korean. Don't know much about Filipino culture. I learned more about Filipino culture after Remy died than while he was alive. And it puts things that he said and done in much better perspective. And I feel that I know him now better than I've ever known him. And it's a shame because we could have had, if, if, if there have been, if there have been more Filipinos out there, just period. Cause they're, it's, if they're a minority of, and, are they Asian or Polynesian, depending on who you're talking to? But they're still a mi they're a minority of that region, and so we're like Buffalo, the Metro Buffalo, Greater Buffalo area is like a million people. There's like 400 families here. That's it. I was in the uh, the country of Iceland. There's 400 Filipinos there. Period. I don't know why it's ice. I, I you know it's ice. It's I know it's an island. It's ice. But they go wherever work is, yeah. and. Um, and they'll take the jobs that no one's willing to do. So they're not stealing anything either, but they're doing it the right way. But the the thing here is, if I would have had more exposure to uh, Filipino culture, I I think I could have been a lot closer to Remy. And I felt very close to Remy. And hello, Mr. Saturno. Hey, Jim, Ron. We got Rich and James. Folks, yes, if you're watching, tell us where you watch from. Smash that like button. So, I mean, okay, how do we – okay. Generally speaking, when you guys got together, you agreed to do this together, because um, you guys kind of, you guys do some interviews, but then obviously you cover very specific topics within, uh, and I'm going to get to the, where you guys kind of indirectly branch out to the global FMA community, but with specifics to, you guys interview people, and then you kind of discuss topics that are relevant, or that generally speaking to minor niece um was that a mutual kind of agreement or i mean did you guys did, in other words did you guys come up uh, agree to do that because you felt there were some misconceptions you wanted to make make folks aware bring truth ty why don't you start i would say from my point of view i i think it was just because hey that's what that's in terms of fma that's how we both both came up him being his primary art and me being my my adopted second primary, if you will, right? So I do more of modern Arnis now than I've ever done of probably Kung Fu. But um, I think, you know, since that's our common thread, we wanted that. And the other thing, as, as Tim will probably tell you, I had a big uh, need, desire, want to really look out for those disenfranchised people, for the people that were separated, that were lost in the diaspora when Remy died, right? And, and were left hanging uh, through no fault of their own maybe different different organizations didn't do the same things as they used to or maybe they really wanted Remy as they didn't feel comfortable joining any particular group but they wanted to do their own thing which is cool they, they carried on the best they could and we wanted them you know to get their story out and plus we're just interested right mm -hmm. so there's some self-serving parts there and there's some larger picture parts but we also realize that that does happen everywhere even this weekend I came across a, a group and I, and I didn't know much about their internals and and they were, you know, talking amongst themselves, with, including me, because we all trust each other. Um, and I was hearing some of the same things that we always hear in our own arts. And it was like, OK, yeah, it's the same as it ever was. But, you know, from the parts we knew, we want to start there and point out that, hey, these things happen everywhere and it's OK. But let's just get some good messages out so people can do and love and share their arts. So you brought. OK, so when Remy died, so. Uh, you know, and uh, of course, I'm not claiming anything about my niece. So it sounds like there were some. Um, fracture. I mean, some fractures. I mean, there were some just kind of got lost in the shuffle, or just a frag overall the fragmentation, or just. Uh, okay, I'll I'll be bad cop. Okay, so um, it it a, a bomb went off because Remy didn't expect for himself to die, and I'm going to give my opinion, which I'm allowed to have, and no one has to agree with me. Let's start off with the basics. They never executed Remy's will, which would have put a whole different power play in place. Mm -hmm. um, hell, okay, so I was with Remy when he got diagnosed. 
He was having equilibrium problems and all this other stuff. He offered to promote me, which he just promoted me months prior. And I sat there and said, Remy, uh, let's get you out of here. Don't worry about this. You don't need to promote me. You just did. We're, you're going to beat this. And then it was, I went home, called up the people, some people, get him out of there before someone gets promoted. He offered me the system. And then a whole bunch of Americans went over after I left and got promoted. And now to say fifth degree promotions supersede people who are ranked above them and a silly title that never existed prior to this. Now, even my own Datu promotion. Okay, now listen, here we go. I've never said this publicly. Now listen to me very, very closely. I would have even questioned my Datu promotion that happened in July versus October with the whole tumor if Remy hadn't offered me the Datu the year before. Oh, okay. 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 So he had uh, what a baseball sized tumor in his head tie. Something like that. Yeah. Oh my! It God. doesn't happen overnight. Holy, that big! Oh my goodness. Yes, yes. So they operated. They took it out. Was encapsulated. Ten months later, he dies. End of story. Um, but so with that, so but they're saying people are saying okay. And the other thing, here's the thing. He, I was in the room when the doctor said. A German talking to a Filipino, which neither can, can, can speak English very well, goes to him, you're going to die. I'm crying my eyes out. And then I went into automatic mode. I called Leon J. said that Remy's in the hospital with high blood pressure. He's, he's okay because I don't want to cause this big stir, you know, uh, but he's not going to be able to make it. And you're the next seminar stop because we were in Germany for the, for the, the camp there because I was – I was in, um, he was in Tunisia. I was in Plymouth, England, and we met there. And there, um, some of the promotions started in Tunisia. And he was wearing a shirt upside down, inside out, and backwards. And they thought he was stumbling, but they thought he was joking. But then days later, they take him to a hospital. Okay. But that's okay because the promotions, the promotions supersede everything. But so where did he, did he, I'm sorry. Was he in, in Europe when he passed? I thought it was Canada. I don't remember that. Well, that's when he got diagnosed. So they fly him. I left. A bunch of Americans fly over. A whole bunch of promotions are being done. They ask where you want to go. He goes into Victoria Island, which is in between Seattle and Vancouver. And that's where his two youngest children are. So they took out the tumor, and 10 months later, he passed away. Fortunately, I was able to see him a couple times before he passed. Um. But at the end of the day, these are the conditions that this stuff was done. And the will was never executed to this day, which here's what Remy did that was different than everyone else. And, and this caused some problems recently. So listen to what I'm saying closely, because I don't want you to listen. I want them to listen. Remy Prasis, in his will that he'd been working on for years, and there was three attorneys, start with David Pajak, Went to Brett Salafia and then ended up with Kevin Black, which is one of my, uh, which is one of my black belts, and also is now an FBI agent um, who has, you know, and he's and all these gentlemen were very serious about the task at hand, helping Remy set up his his uh, will. Remy wills the children the physical estate. He wills his students, the Marshall children, the system because. The kids were not working with him for the 20 years that it was here in the States. Right, right. So, but there was a bunch of names and none of them were given, you know, well, I mean, with the will not being executed, seven people pulled this whole thing together and saying that there's these titles of master of tappy tappy that supersede rank, although they all had to be promoted to fifth degree black belt to have the master title, but whatever. Um, so this is just my, this is, the facts and my opinion on the facts. Oh, so okay. um, yeah, right. on the show, we take people who are, don't take, they're not, not our friends. <laughs> they're not in our camp. They're not in our organization. <laughs> and we've had Frank Schakowsky, yeah. who's not, a, who's unaligned classmate of ties actually, but we say, Frank's Frank. not aligned. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. He's really not aligned yeah. with anybody. Okay. No, and I met Frank because his teacher, Eric Alexander, had me out for a seminar in 91. Okay, okay. Okay. We've had Ed Kwan, not not our enemy, but he works with the Philippines now. Uh, we've had uh, Lauren Therian, another person who's an independent. We just had Peter Kautz on, who's a friend of mine, 
but is unaligned, unaligned. you know. Um, Master Rich Parsons, who's he's with us. That's that's not fair to say. And then, uh, can we think of anyone else we've had? Oh, we have Bobby Tabata. Sure, it's not modern, but you know. Yeah, but I mean, so. So, and we got more people that we want to bring on that are not affiliated with us, right? Because we want to show there's more modern artists out there. See, that's so strange, unaligned. Like when I look at Ki, it's like it's not even a question mark. It's like you are aligned with somebody. Well, it's either you're aligned with Kiro, you're aligned with Ricketts, you're aligned with Tommy Dye, you're aligned, maybe you went to Yuli, but then it turned into Bob Sabu, Ray Galan. I mean, whatever. But you have an absolute alignment. Well, you know? well, okay, so we do have an alignment. Here's the problem with the system. This is what the black belts got wrong. And Ty, call me on this. <laughs> In any system, the grandmaster teaches the black belts or the instructors, right? Mm -hmm. And the instructors teach the students. Mm -hmm. Remy didn't have that. He taught everybody. Yeah. Well, that did make a strange connection. But I can tell you, I was on a line for probably 10 years there. Pat, post his death? Post his death. I, sta I stayed on with the uh, those masters Tapi Tapi for a while. They started splitting up amongst themselves. Um and there were some other things. It just got mess messy for me, right? From my perspective, what I wanted to see and didn't want to see. I'm like, that's a little messy. I'm going to go over here and train and practice and teach uh, and let me know when things are cool again because oh, I got a lot of work to do anyway. I got I got more than enough material from Remy to work on for a long time. And then 10 years later, I was doing some local things and was starting to peek out into the FMA community. Met Tim and it was like old times because we had met each other in the 90s. Um, yeah. Well, let's put another thing. You have a family. You have a career. You have more th important things to deal with martial arts politics. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Things are and, and some of these people, that's what they made it into. So so by virtue, I know we're not to get off topic here. We're going to jump, you know, obviously. Well, actually, <laughs> this definitely has relevance to FMA talk. Um, so, at, so by virtue of FMA talk, the vehicle, you were trying to bring these truths out via whether it's the lack of the will cause some of this stuff, the, um, the fractions, some of the titles that maybe came to be that generally speaking wouldn't have been ha had he still been alive. It, um, am I, is this fair what I'm saying or? Well, <sighs> for me, I, I don't know if I was trying to correct anything. I just wanted good information out there and I wanted uh, the conversations to be had so that people could communicate, right? You can't have a community without communication. So even if people don't, uh, get along. You can have a community where people don't get along, but then you can do something with that. But if it's all fractured and separated, and I didn't want it to die, you know, divided, divided we fall, right? I didn't want that. So you mean proactive? Okay, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So all right, so that's yeah. obviously one of the goals here that you guys are being proactive, not only bringing out truth, but to bring some structure, unity, and so that minor niece continues, doesn't fall by the wayside. Okay. Um. Uh, I'll 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 tell you my motivation. Uh, in my opinion, there's people that are telling mis is are, are promoting misinformation, whether it's due to ignorance or um, or by design. You know, and th that can't happen. You know, because the thing here, if no one stands up to fix these things, mm -hmm. people will be people will get wrong information out there. I mean, and wrong is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, I want to know. I want someone, if I say something wrong, I mean, that's something, I, everything can come out of my mouth is wrong in one way or another. But if I if I say something incorrect, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. You had Brian Zolinski and on the show, and you talked about the camps. You said the camp was in 1985 in West Virginia. I could have sworn it was Virginia in my notes. I looked in my notes. He had it half right. It was it was West Virginia, but it was 1983. But he, he keeps talking that it's multiple camps. It was only one camp. And that's wrong. You know, and it's like there's only one World War One. There's only one World War Two. You know, but he keeps talking about these multiple camps and his instructor teaching at these multiple camps. I'm like, well, it may have been Philadelphia because the, the camp moved up to Philadelphia. There was an American Arnie's took over the spot the following year. But that was an unaligned and that was a split from Remy. Um and you know, like once again, you know, I mean, and Brian didn't. I don't know. How, well, we're going to talk about this. Brian only went to about a handful of camps, so he wouldn't. I mean, I've gone to thirty camps 
I started going to camps in 1986 and hadn't stopped going to camps. I I went to all the I went to a, at least two camps a year. I averaged up until the time Professor um, to the last camp he taught. You know, and, and and actually, it was the first few years was one camp a year, and that was it. In the first hoped- the first few years until he got the wheels spinning and getting okay. Okay. Um, I didn't have the means to go to all these other camps, but I mean, yeah. you know, eighty. So I, I, I went to the Mississippi summer camp in 86. I went to Michigan summer camp at, at 87. I went to every Michigan summer camp for that point on. We hosted three in Buffalo, 88, 99, or 80, 89, 90, 91. I've gone to multiple Massachusetts camps, the Orlando camp, multiple te- Texas. Hell, how many Texas camps did you go to? Somewhere around 18 when I counted it all up. And that was just within 10, you know, eight, 10 years. So eight, eight, when we're years. talking about camps, we're two of the people you should be talking to. Now, I'm not saying did this happen at one particular <laughs> camp because I didn't. We didn't go to all the camps. But when it talks about how the camps were done, and you know what, <laughs> uh, the comment being made that, well, you know, no one tested for degrees above black belt. Really, that's funny because I remember testing for degrees above black belt at camp in front of people. I remember people failing their tests for black belt at camp, or degrees above black belt. Um, so when someone says certain things didn't happen and they don't know what they're talking about and it's wrong, we got to correct it. I mean, it's, it's not about shoving it up someone's butt. It's about making sure that the right information is out there. And I'm a little more visceral about this because it's like, dude, you're wrong. I don't care if you're promoting a, a personal agenda or not. You're wrong. Okay. So let's fix that. All right. So, no, I, I, I again, I, I commend what you guys are doing. You're trying to, you know, obviously bring some truth and exposure and also the people who maybe might not know, as you guys suggested. Or And so, you know, some of the episodes, and this is uh, with pure regards to um, talks about within the modernist framework on your shows. Um, modernist, so different. So on that show, why, um, why modernist? Why is it? Um, proceed to be so different. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Ty. I'm just smiling because, um, it, from my perspective, when I try to, try, you know, I, I'm looking for all the to interact with all sorts of people with FMA, right? I want to. I'm, I'm a greedy bastard, like I said before. I, I love it all, and, and I and I want to do it to understand my modernities better. So when I got out there and I started mixing up with people, I generally saw that in for the the other. FMA styles would often have a bad, uh, bad rap for FM for modern East, right? Because uh, of, I guess, the relative level of commitments, or the number of people, or the popularity, or you know, you name it, right? Um, but it was that that kind of bugged me. So that that was that's why I was smiling there. <laughs> what was the rest of the question, though? No, no. Why? But why? Why is it mis? Why is it you know? Why is it misconstrued to be so different, or why is it so ah, different? Okay. Well, I mean. To be from the way it was was spread was through the seminar and camp circuit and it was always marketed to people um who were already doing other arts so they could add things they could find the art within their art find modernities within what they already do or add to what they do but it wasn't always an adjunct or a polish or hey we're gonna do sticks it was always that right so if you look at somebody doing something as an add-on are they gonna be as good as a so i juggled right i am not a professional juggler <laughs> You would not go to me to go see, you know, what all the classical juggling would be, but I can do some juggling. Um, and so from my perspective, I, that's the characterization, characterization I would hear a lot of times um, from people thinking about modernities coming from different FMA. And, and they would sometimes be surprised. I would take it as a compliment that I was a modernist guy. Um, and, I, and, you know, I moved different. I'm not saying I moved great or anything. I'm always working. I already got lots of to do, but I would, even I could create that difference. Uh, I did take it seriously. I trained it as, a, as, a, as its own art. I was very committed to it. And, and maybe that helps, you know, I like to think that when you do the work, it shows, right? Yeah. 100%. I mean, I mean, with that, so he started with his Arnie's exposure came through Eric Alexander. Eric was in Connecticut and that was Frank's teacher. So when Frank brought me out in 91, I specifically asked him, you've got Richard Roy, you've got these guys, that guy's the other. Why are you having me out? He goes, because Tim, you're the only one that does it by itself. And he wants to, so here's the thing, modern or nice. And we talked about the difference between modern and combatant, but actually Mm -hmm. 
Modern East is no different than any other FMA system out there because everyone goes with these FMA systems that get pieces of material they don't have. The difference is whether the instructor really busts their chops to make it be like the system or just as an enrichment or to enhance their base art. So if a if you go to a performance coach, they're not trying to change you, they're trying to improve you. You know, that's you know, I mean, and that's why I want Remy was almost more of a, a performance coach trying to take you to the next level. Right. Not teaching you a new sport, helping you with unconventional training to take your base art to another level. So most of his students, since he didn't so listen. I don't know of any art that had more people doing it than modern Arnie's. Mm. But there was so much diversity in there. And I don't think, and I think uh, people hear what they want to hear. And I think they got it wrong. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I had the only, okay, there was only two full-time modern Arnie's academies while Professor was alive. One was the Filipino Karate Academy where I started. And the other is Horizon Martial Arts, which is me. Everyone else that I know of that runs a school Arnis is their secondary or tertiary art. Okay. Or modern Arnis specifically. Yeah. Okay. So they never took their FMA training wheels off. They never tried to because at the end of the day, their students are getting ranked in Kempo, Jiu Jitsu, Karate, Taekwondo, fill in the blanks. Remy took this Marshall University approach where if you go from one degree to another, you know, I go to go from. Uh, I'm, I'm going to college for this and I switched degrees. Mm. A lot of those credits are transferable. So right. Remy had this Marshall University going, which is one of the reasons why I call my video channel the Modern East University. Um, so he embraced your art. Whereas like when you go with Ernesto Praces, he had his Marshall DNA it was, and it was, it was part of Modern. There's no question about where it came from. But what he did is really tried to build Filipino martial artists. Remy took martial artists and make them better with Filipino concepts. That's how he became the beast. I mean, like, okay, tell me someone who specializes in Filipino martial arts that was bigger than Remy. Um, I can, not off the top of my head. I mean, yeah. He saved Filipino martial arts in the Philippines. He was a goodwill ambassador with diplomatic papers from the government and went on tour around the world spreading their martial culture. And anyone who's teaching martial arts for money these days is because he showed it was possible. And that's what everyone what everyone hopped on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Bruce Jutnik was the one that bought him his first uniform. He, we talked about this the other weekend. The 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 Trish, you know, the top that we always see him in, mm -hmm. that was a sport karate uniform. So it's not even Filipino, but the Filipinos saw Remy wear it, and then now they they mass Oh, is that what I can't? Okay, okay. Yeah, it's an American. It's an American take mm -hmm. on a Japanese system, and okay. and and people. Uh, and this is why I'm polarizing, because we'll talk to other people and they'll say, "Oh, we do this because the Filipinos do this." And where did they get that from? Hey, I got an idea. Before World War II, what kind of uniforms were they wearing? Before World War II, like World War yeah. One, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, the, the Philippines. I'm not not World War One. What were the Filipinos martial artists wearing? Before oh my God, their daily clothes, whatever they had on. <laughs> and then afterwards, oh, all of a sudden, belts, uniforms, and yeah, Japanese system. Oh yeah, no, the Japanese definitely had a huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. So inspired by another culture, when two cultures meet, they 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 will have effect in both directions. Yeah. But they put it. Uh, they put their own twist on it and made it themselves. Made them their own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Another episode you guys uh, talked, and you guys might touch on. Um, why do you guys think it's the most misunderstood, most misunderstood art? Modern East. This is one of your. Uh, episodes. I think what I just said, said right there. So so it's misunderstood by its own people too. I think. Um. Um, I, I'll tell you from my point, then time, he, he can give you a, a different area, regionally speaking. Mm -hmm. But having having been run, one of Remy's primary ukes from about 88 on, uh, I never saw anyone commit to the art. I saw people do it as a secondary or a tertiary art. So it's 
So it's misunderstood because its own people don't realize it that they weren't doing Filipino martial arts. It was Filipino concepts. And most people don't, un- when they hear modern Arnis being Filipino martial arts, I-, I was talking, I was talking to some combatant people. They talked about someone we all know. We're not going to use his name. And they say, he doesn't move very well. Okay. You mean he doesn't move like a Filipino martial artist? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. But now Remy's, Remy's approach was to make him move better. It wasn't to make him move like a Filipino martial artist. It was to make him move better. Oh, that's a whole nother story now. Oh, you know, that that puts things in a whole different perspective. Like I said, there's a there's a core group of us, probably single digit on the percentile, at least the leaders I'm talking about, not the students underneath, that uh, really push to do Filipino martial arts and represent the art well as Filipino. Most people had no intention to do it. They put their uniforms on. So they have their Filipino outfits on a Saturday at a seminar. And the rest of the time, they're wearing their, their Korean dough box or their Japanese geese the rest of the time. So one week, one week of the one or two weekends of the year, they brush off their uniform, put it on, and then they go back to their primary art. Their primary art. Gotcha. Okay. You did so on the Maranese camps. What they, you know, was he kind of, it seemed like he was kind of revolutionary in the aspect of camps. Like, I don't, you guys probably know this answer better than me. Was there other people that, you know, were doing the camps that early? I know that Dan Asano, Larry Hartzell, Fong, I mean, they had they had that mountain, uh, you know, I forget the name, the, down there in the south, uh, the mountain. When did that start? It's a great question. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. Anybody? Yeah, <laughs> maybe somebody on here. I'm, if I had to guess, late 80s, if I had to guess. Um, well, Remy was doing camps in 1983, so I can't. My yeah, I don't think reaction. the Smoky Mountains was going that early. I could be wrong, but maybe somebody might have that information. So yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I would say all these martial art camps came out because Remy showed it can do because Black Belt Magazine did an article on it after Remy did it. Okay, okay. I mean, there, there were camps, and you remember the big three camps, right? You had uh, the Dillman, Dillman, uh, yeah, yeah. Wally J, and Remy, right? So, but. But as far as FMA camps, I don't know. But again, uh, I uh, came in fairly, fairly uh, on that last decade, right? Uh, and as a kung fu guy, so I wasn't paying attention for the first ten years of my martial arts. But I was going to add two names. We also had uh, Carl Minkle on there and uh, Mukesh. Oh, hey, thanks. Hey, um, forgot about that. Yeah, very good. Yeah, two other modern East guys that we had that are, that are not affiliated. Hey, yeah. Uh, um, why don't you share what Jay just put up there, uh, Dean? Okay. Yeah, I'm just. Re- there's a post. I'll be right back. Sure. Okay, yeah. I know the French documentary is talking about. They actually, the word Kali is actually mentioned in there. Just, oh, okay. I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, it's a French documentary. It's actually, it's pretty neat. Um, there's a pose for French documentary where the practitioner only wears a white shirt with our niece printed on the shirt. I saw our niece grandmaster pictures wearing Japanese uniforms who were also FMA practitioners. Hopefully it wasn't just a shirt. Hopefully they're like pants and stuff. Yeah, pants would be good. Yeah, that's my that's that's uh, not PG tie botting. That's R or X tie botting. That's, that's not PG. Well, yeah. well, you know, the good thing about that. I mean, first of all, what did they wear? What did they wear in the fields? Oh my God, just a regular yeah yeah red pants with a white shirt. Yeah. That's where all these uniforms came from initially. Yeah. The colors of red and white. So red was they they would okay. So here's how the modern East uniform comes about. Stop it here. Um, and, uh, the white shirt, they would wear white in the, okay. They go out in the fields, they wear a white shirt to keep them cooler yeah. and the red pants. Cause they're working in red clay and, and multiple reasons why the belt came about Remy. First of all, they, they would use a rope for their belt to hold their pants up because of all the, all the, all the fluid out there. And, and, uh, I was talking to Rick Menglenong that told me that the knot was put to the side because like a mechanic, if you're bending over, you have the belt buckle to worry about busting up the cars. Well, if you got that knot in the front, it's jamming in your belly all the time. Oh, okay. So our our belt traditionally is worn on the side, on the hip, like a kung fu sash, unlike a karate belt, which is done in the front. Now, I usually wear it in the front because I do break falls a lot. And Well, I used to. I don't know. If <laughs> My students do break falls a lot, <laughs> and falling on that knot sucks. You know? I, I used to. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right, right. yeah. Well, I, I put my time in, and now it's, now that's it's that's another that's time. <laughs> so, but um, but I, I'd be curious to see how it was printed on the shirt, seeing that 
I don't know if they had silk, silk screening back then. <laughs> if it's the same documentary, um, you you could definitely find it on YouTube. Um, I the name hopefully maybe Jay can. Uh, it's def- I I've seen the documentary he's referencing. Yeah. I, I know I've heard about it multiple times. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's funny um, that they they saw the Arnis Grandmaster in a Japanese uniform. I mean, well, listen, a lot of people were wearing t shirts Okay, when Remy started, the uniform was like a almost like a a, a sleeping shirt with red mm-hmm. with red pants. Yep. And then after Bruce Chutnik bought him the jacket, that's when he started wearing that. Huh. All right. Before we go into, I want to segue into how some of you guys' discussion goes into the greater community. But, but based on what I'm gathering as far as FMA talk within the scope of my needs, you guys are seem like you're doing genuine good work, trying to raise awareness, trying to bring truth out to those who might not know or been maybe perhaps misinformed. And, and all that. Um, and, and, and inclusion. What's that? Say, uh, and inclusion, right? So that's one of the things we throw out there. Hey, you're uh, you're doing Maronese. You may not be associated with the group. Come on the show and get your story out. We'd love that. So it, I would oh, also okay. say that, that are not affiliate, that are kind yeah. of maybe stranded. Out. Listen, we've even okay. So there's obviously we're a cornucopia of personalities in any martial art uh, community, um, and we don't all get along with each other. I have more than one occasion put the word out to have these people on the show and tell they can tell us their story or if they want to they have information that we don't have yeah right. like ty says we're greedy bastards we want it all yeah, you guys want to hear it you want but you know the and the thing here is the conversation we will never railroad somebody but at the same token if you're going to come out and just say well you know i'm the guy because of this this and this and you have no data to back it up you know, it's like, well, where's your proof? Okay. You know, a lot of things that I don't make claims, I make statements. And I make statements where the, uh, here's the thing I work. Okay. This, this is everybody. This is not Remy Prasis. This is everybody. I do not go with stuff that was done behind closed doors. Okay. There needs to be a witness. Okay. In 99, Remy offered me Datu. I turned it down because I was going to testify the next year. And I wanted people to see me test and get my belt and my Datsu ship at the same time. All right. He promotes me and he promotes me in Michigan. Mm-hmm. I walk into the Atlanta camp, Tucker, Georgia, and he introduces me as Datsu Tim. The year before Remy told Kelly Warden that I was promoted. And when I talked to him later, but I didn't take it. I didn't tell him that. <laughs> and Remy had this thing where he lit these little fires underneath our bus and a butts in a productive way to see what we would do in a productive way, you know? And uh, he would always, I was like, cause Bobby Sullen and I are really good friends. Could mm-hmm. have almost become in-laws at one time. Um, and he and I were the two guys coming up and Remy was, Remy lit that fire between the two of us. And we were always like, you bastard. I love you, man. And it was never a, I'm going to kill this son of a, no, no, never it's for a healthy competition. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how you get better. Yeah, I yeah. want to be the best there is, not because I keep people down, because they push me to that level. Yeah, no, it's healthy. Um, so you guys, okay, again, one of the things I admire about your guys' show is that, you know, you do touch upon, you know, global subjects and that can carry over to the rest of the FMA community. And these are some things I, w- I want to talk about. Is that, um, is this kind of incidental or was this, you know, with intent you know, as far as you guys, some themes kind of leaking out there to the greater community? What say you guys? I would say both. Um, incidental because of, well, one, the natural bridge. Um, but there's another play over. So Tim used to do these, these FMA professional things because he does care about FMA uh, business of instructing and sharing these arts in general. And it's applicable to so many people. So with those two links of our exposure and background and him doing the FMA professionals and us seeing the same issues that we all, you know, you hear about all these issues elsewhere. So anyway, that's that's sort of how the link gets made from my point of view. And Tim, you know, maybe has a different different point of view. Uh, sometimes just knuckleheads say the wrong thing in front <laughs> of me. You just have and we need to speak out about tirade, which goes into well, well, no, I, well tomorrow's show. I, I, if anyone saw my post the other day. Brian Zolinski made a bunch of comments about, uh, I would have done it earlier, but my hair is still purple. It's still fading out. Hopefully it'll be done. Yeah. 
Uh, it, <laughs> he's like, yeah. Um, but it's a long he, time. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, six washings. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> so either I don't wash my, either I don't wash, or it, it just stained my hair. But Brian talked about camps. He put a, a first video out, and then some people, that guy there, <laughs> called him on a couple statements, and he put a, in my opinion, a half-assed apology out, and. Um, I made a comment my own page the other day about the show we're going to do tomorrow night. And we're going to have uh, Lauren Therian on. So between us, we'll probably have covered 15 different camp locations, which will give us a really broad, maybe 20, which would give a really broad stroke. And these you know, are... Remy Price's Alive Camps. This is a Remy yeah, camp. Remy Price's Alive Camps. Because yeah. unfortunately, Brian was talking about the Remy Camps... And then he talked about the post Remy camps. I'm like, well, wait a minute. If this is about what's, if this is supposed to be what's going on while Remy was teaching in Alive, why are you talking about tests and promotions and camps that happened years after he died, maybe even a decade after he died? So let's let's get get. You know, I'm very specific about the facts. Matter of fact, the, the test booklet he had, they didn't have a booklet that nice. It was a bunch of martial artists were cheap bastards we took a bunch of sheets of paper and maybe it was stapled together maybe i I have a whole bunch of those but this was like the the legal size folded in a cardstock mentality and that's that that is a post as a post remy document he had and some of the things he made comments including you know you owed professor three hours of sweat for your next belt three hours for sweat for your next belt you mean i mean i would do that the first day going back stop it so um i you know so to me there's someone talking on his butthole, made some bad comments that actually make us look bad to say we only need to put three hours in to get your next degree, and that, that people didn't test for the belts, that they were just given. And I'm like, but then again, he was never a professional martial artist. He was a correctional officer, raised a family, which is his primary position. You take care of your family first. So I don't fault him for any of that. But his, the information he has is incorrect. And that's why we're doing the show. Not because we planned to discuss this. It was a good topic. He put it out there, dropped the ball, and actually did the same thing on your show. Uh, when you had uh, him and uh, Chad on, because they talked about how they would just jump on the floor and start training. And I'm like, nope, not at a university, you don't. Someone has to go to the front door does all the registration. Now, maybe their instructors took care of that because neither of them were direct students of Remy at the time, but that still paints an incorrect image of how camps were done and stuff. So when these types of things come up, we correct them. Plus, we want to talk. Well, there's a lot of topics we like to talk about. We talked about the belting system. Uh, we talked about titles. We talked about, uh, and you know, like we're going to talk about camps tomorrow. Um, you know, we, we, you know we, we talked about organizations and our opinions on what is more of a primary modern earnings versus a, a a derivative system and not in the negative way as in it, it came off on its own and became its own animal, like the gut you okay. know, um, you know, stuff of that nature. Hey, how Balintawak influenced modern earnings. So we talk about all these things because these are good topics we have at seminar. I mean, someone will call me up and say, Hey, why do you think this is happening? Uh, well, you know, why do you think that's happening? And then, I uh, lately the uh, uh, Facebooker has been messaging me. It's like, well, why do you think uh, no one? No, I mean, at the end of the day, most people don't know the whole art. Mm-hmm. And this, well, why don't they know the whole art? Because I had the only full time academy at the time. Everyone else was doing the karate and taekwondo, and they fell. What's oh, I'm getting my butt whooped at open hand combatives. Well, you're a fifth degree black belt in taekwondo. Kick him in the head. Okay, boom, done. <laughs> Use your oh, wait, no, that's the integration of the systems. No, that's you using an unfair advantage. Well, listen, when it comes to defensive taxes on the street, who the hell cares? Get the job done. Yeah. But don't say it's your our niece when you when you when it's your your hook kick to the head. They've been working 30 years. Yeah, right. Don't blame on it. Well, there's one thing about the, the camp things. So when you were there, you would notice that people were tested black. Not every by the time you were testing for black at the camps. Uh, and these are the camp ones I'm talking about, uh, people would know a certain amount of material. They did not know all the material. So when they tested again, guess what? They tested on the next layer of stuff. So sometimes they were tested. There's some, I know, at least yeah. second and third that did not have all the forms. Yeah. So when they were tested again, it was not just going through the motions. They were being evaluated on one getting better, which hopefully they're doing, 
and two, the material they didn't have for the previous promotions. And every year, someone was adding more material to the test because yes. Remy kept evolving. Yes, that was the other part. So yeah. the sheets kept getting longer and longer. But like, well, I, I hate you. I hate using the forms as the example of all things yeah, to use that. an example. It's the worst right. thing, but it's <laughs> tangible. It's right. tangible. Right. Okay, so let's say, how much did the art grow from the Philippines? Well, in the Philippines, there was only four stick forms, no open hand forms. Mm -hmm. So in the States, Remy developed an additional eight open hand forms. So now there's 12 forms. Mm -hmm. The quantity tripled. Now the art grew more than that. But I'm just using that as a tangible thing. Mm -hmm. So I would have, we would do the test. And everybody would be standing for, for, for stick and hand form one. And then we would do stick in hand form two. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple people sit down. Stick in hand form three. More people come. Mm -hmm. Stick in hand form four. Boom. Now it's time to do hand form five. Mm -hmm. A Which third people. of the people go off the floor. <laughs> yep. Time to do hand form six. A third of that goes off the floor. Mm -hmm. And then it's time to do seven and eight. And the only people standing, usually my students. Or the people that would work with me because I was the form instructor for Remy. And people would come running to me at camp and go, hey, I need to go over this, this, and forms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, that's when I used to drink. And I don't have a problem. I, I drink. I still drink. I got I got a nice, you know, Thai scene in my bar. I just, I don't have a taste for it at the moment. Thai has raided my bar. Um, <laughs> Thai, but, Thai has raided my bar. <laughs> but people would come. And sometimes my refrigerator was more full. <laughs> And they left at the end of the camp than when it started, which is fine, you know. Because we would, you know. we would always be left at the end there too. Um, but yeah. as far as you know, we would be practicing in the morning before camp started. And a lot of times, I like to wake up with forms because that's what I do as a as a kung fu guy before I got sucked in. Uh, and you, it, people will come up and say, "Hey, is this all you do?" Because we knew all the forms and we were only first degree or whatever it was. Uh, and I took that as a compliment, but that also. Mm -hmm made me think, you know, what, what, what's going on here? What are they not doing? Why are they not taking it seriously? I'm not picking on them. They just had a different set of goals and a different set of motivations and priorities. I get it. Um, for me, it was a loss. I looked at it as a loss. If you're not taking advantage of this great thing, because you all felt the professor by now, and I was one of his major rookies or dummies in Texas for years and years in the, in the 90s, which I loved, except that I hated it too. <laughs> but um, but if you're if you're going to throw his gift on the floor and not take it seriously in the meantime to the level that you can to some reasonable level, that that was sad to me. Yeah. You know, you look at this and I, I, I don't know what this Pinoy Ruga, <laughs> Julius Vladimir Francisco, Tom Pinoy Ru. Pilgrim is just like Aiden, or just like a stone battle. I don't know <laughs> what that's just, saying. Yeah. Okay. He's just big and then uh, <laughs> and, and Ty, you're a Raider for a lost uh, foreign land there. He loves it. Right. Love you, brother. Um, you know, here's you know, here's the thing. We talked about this in the pre-show. Let's talk about it right now. How many people have gone into Brazilian jiu-jitsu just to add a little ground game in their curriculum? Absolutely. Okay. Now, how many people do you think add that to their curriculum and don't cite the source material? Many. How does that help Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Wow. Um, I think it does. Yeah, yeah. Now – now, and and that's the problem with modern East. A lot of people go to modern. I have my punches. I have my kicks. I have my locks and controls. I'm going to take the stick disarms, maybe do some nice disarms, add them to what I'm doing. Maybe I'll give it credit. Mm -hmm. Because no one – So here, here's the genius and the Achilles heel of Remy Praces and his approach. So we're three. there's three of us. Remy comes to the three of us. We're all in the same town. I'm going to open an Arnis Academy. So the three of us are saying, this guy's our enemy because that was the mindset back in the day. Uh, then he goes, I, I can make you to be Supreme Masters. Dean, you can be Dean, Dean Branco, the Arnis Master. And Tai Boating, you will be the Arnis Princess. It will be wonderful. And Tim, you got a banana in your ear, but we will work with that. We, 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 we'll that would be right. But the thing here is, he would then teach all three of us to become better. Buffalo had 11 separate modern Arnie's programs. Buffalo? Buffalo. We, we, per capita, we had the highest concentration of modern Arnie's. 11 here. different programs going on in Buffalo. Okay, so let me see if I can drop it down. I'm going to go from south to north. So 
uh, the late uh, Gary Costanza. Bill Adams had two locations. Jerome Barber was at the college. I was in West Seneca. Okay, then we go uh, downtown Buffalo. We had uh, one of my students, um, Jeff Reck, had a program. Then you go to... Uh, you go into Kentoro Judo Club. That's where Dan Carr was teaching. So there's seven right there. John Bryant, the guy who was my teacher. Don Zangi had f- two locations at Fighting Back Institute. Okay. Um, David Battaglia, Peter. Co- Actually, there's there's 12 right there. 12 and Jip. Wow. This with happened improb- yeah. with, with in probably a 20-minute uh from from north to south, from from one end to the other, twenty minutes to get from the, the southernmost school to the northernmost school. I'm just thinking in that just that geographic area, twelve. Like you don't even like you could take an area like that and not even have twelve just martial arts schools. Period. Let yeah, alone yeah. twelve that are teaching on modern needs. Yeah, modern did that all over the place. We had that even in Bryan College Station, Texas. We had uh, I want to say five programs in Bryan College Station, Texas. Yeah. Two of them were mine. One was part of the university. One was part of off campus. And there was Anche Rima Montoya had a program. Dr. Uh, Dr. Michael Hume had a program. Dr. Stephen Powell had a modernist program. There was one other, but I don't think they lasted. But anyway, that then this is a this is a small little university town. Yeah, it happened all over the state. So that's why we say it's yeah. so darn big. Yeah. Well, okay. Here, here's what Chris said. That happened in my Kempo class of '91. We did stick work, and it wasn't until years later when I learned it wow. was from Modern Arnese. Makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, and but FMA, that's the problem with FMA as a whole. A lot of people do that to FMA. It's just that modern is the biggest uh, victim of that. I don't want to say stealing <laughs> of that absorption, you know. And, you know, the, the thing is, when Remy passed, a lot of people were there because the personality of Remy. It was Remy. And a lot of people, when they left, they said, I'm, you know, they've either seen politics or been a victim of it in the past in their primary system. Say, listen, it's not the same without Remy. I, I like the material. I'll teach it in my curriculum and we're done. Yeah. So, you know. It's, yeah. It's just like, again, not the piggyback off. Um, when you see people like they're unaffiliated or like they're, they're not like, again, just using KI, it's just like, I mean, unless you, in other words, like, less tomorrow, I woke up in the morning and I just go, you know what? I don't want to be under Brandon anymore. You know, I I, I don't want to be under the Avenir. I don't want to be under Burton anymore. I'm just going to fly. Like, I just, it, it, like, it would be kind of suicidal in, in some respects. And it's just, logistically, it just wouldn't make sense. But in your case, well, okay, I, I, I think you're giving it way too much credit. Listen, if you have the curriculum, you don't need anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, it only mm-hmm. matters for certification. And most people, the, most of the Taekwondo schools I see now are no longer part of the Kuki One. Mm-hmm. There, a lot of these guys are independent because too much money was going out of the schools into organizational pockets. Um, I mean, really, okay, you I'm, I'm, and listen, you know, I love Burton. <laughs> You you leave Burton. What does okay? Well, let's let's pull let's pull it back. How many people come through the door to train with you because of Burton versus how many people come to train with you because of you? Oh, Burton. I mean, the fact that I'm under Burton, they find that out and all that. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Well, different. see, well, let's say for me, well, then I, I I had no one came to me because of Remy. They came to me because of Tim Hartman. And I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's both. No, in the uh, beginning, it was the percentage Burton. of people that work with you because of Burton are significantly less because you're Dean Franco. Yeah. Well, and Remy right. also encouraged that, right? Because as you, as Tim said earlier, Remy was teaching everybody. It wasn't a it wasn't a layered thing. You, he taught everybody separately. So if you wanted to train with Remy, you train with Remy. If you mm-hmm. want to train his art and didn't want to go around the place, then I'm going to find this guy. Oh, I like him the best. Okay, I'll train modern with these guys. If they made it known that it's modern. Right, they made it. But, but my martial arts school says Horizon Martial Arts. Mm-hmm. I got currently about 74 active students because of summer break. None of them give a shit because of what I'm because of my pedigree. 
they come in there because of the experience. They've done the classes. They see I know what I'm doing. They like what I'm teaching. It's my presentation. I'm very upfront about my lineage, but they don't come through the door because of my lineage. They don't stay because of my lineage. And we're talking the masses. Do I have specific? Listen, listen. If, if we're talking about, I mean, the majority of the people that come through my door, I would say 95% of them have never trained martial arts before. Okay. And most of the people who, who have trained martial arts, they're at the Taekwondo school. It wasn't for them. They didn't want to do it, whatever. Mm-hmm. They, and, you know, so, but I will get people, my distance students that will train with me because of who I am and wh- who I've trained with and all that other stuff. Yeah, I, I want to do modern word of mouth. Right? They look, they know your, they know your lane. Yeah. But when you were te- you, you had how many kids that you were teaching at one time? Oh my gosh. I mean, with the satellites I, at my peak with the satellites, Running an MMA, FMA program, I had 180. Okay. So how many of them came in because of your pedigree, because they knew the people you were affiliated with, versus they came in because they liked what you were doing and who uh, you are? Um, no, it was definitely me and word of mouth, how I interacted okay. with the kids. That's why people are unaffiliated. And I'm not, I'm not trying – I'm not trying to – listen, we're in a customer service-based industry. Mm. If, If – your teachers stop serving you, you will go elsewhere. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, if you're not getting what you want or they and, kind of put you on the bottom of the barrel, you're going to, yeah, you're going to go elsewhere. And does it matter if you're affiliated? Really? Does that no, matter? I, give no, a shit? I, I mean, think, great. I guess, yeah. you know, it is, um, you know, when you explain that way, I, I, I definitely see the other side. I guess it's just, I didn't realize there were a bunch of modern East people out there that were kind of like just on their own. So to speak, I, I, I just kind of assumed yeah, that they yeah. were aligned with somebody sanctioned. Well, well because of the delivery system. So let's let's say, okay, I, perfect example. God forbid this happens. All of Burton's re- affiliates have trained with Burton, right? Mm. He dies tomorrow. What happens? That's a oof, man. Um, okay. they're going to continue. Oh, because the spirit, they'll continue. Yeah. No, but, but under whom there's no longer that no, person. No, no, no. They're going to continue uh, there. They'll they'll be, they'll be individual. Like you said, they'll be, yeah. That's what happened to us in modern earnings. Okay. That may, well, there you was, put it in that context. Okay. You know, there's no clear, I mean, listen, if Remy put a will in the play that he addressed this, but it was not public. If he had done it ahead of time and part of it's the filipino culture because they don't want to insult people they don't want to hurt people's feelings they don't want people to feel left out so if he had started talking about i mean listen it, people when i left the art or no when i left the organization i didn't leave the art i left the organization because of the nonsense yeah. 34 black belts walked out with me i told them to stay they kept they left all right I went from nothing to being the world's largest non-government sponsored modern artist organization in the world today. Okay. But the thing here is I left, I did my own thing and people went, but some people sat there and said, I, they left and they stayed independent because they're like, yeah, you know, whatever. And if, with any art, you're going to have the same thing, you know, because at the end of the day, let's say um, Ar- Arnold, Arnold Narzo stops teaching tomorrow. He puts someone in charge and you don't want to work with that guy. You're not going to work with that guy. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's how these things happen. That's true. I mean, it's a shame. Yeah. Well, it's also yeah. particularly set up that way with the way Remy was spreading with camps and seminars was, hey, a lot of times people were maybe training nowhere or maybe they were training part of a karate pit. They're the one guy from that school that's going, hey, I'm going to take this stuff up. It's really cool. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, they didn't join any large organizations. They got what they wanted from Remy directly. Uh, and those people were, you know, those people were do- are still doing that today, left over doing mm-hmm. that, right? No, 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 right. They started out that way. Okay. Yep. All right. A couple of the episodes really stood out to me where you guys kind of, when you touched upon other things. So, um, FMA leading to extinction. Who wants, who wants to go first? <laughs> it can be Talk. quick. Each one of you. I mean, like you just kind of give your. You need to put a timer on there this. Can, is there a All timer right. function that we can hit? Well, first I, of all, I, I, there's a, a timer. 
Well, there's a couple of people I've, I missed saying hi to. There's a uh, Brian Riga said hey. Mark uh, Gallardo. Oh, Chad Bailey. Bailey. Chad. Chris Young. Uh, oh, Chad Bailey. Yeah. Brian Riga. Yeah, Marne, my man. And oh, Brian, yeah, yeah. Marne, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Brian, was, oh, thank you, Brian. That was very nice of you. Yeah. I train, I train our dim because of his experience and teaching style. Now he's a failure. Well, wow. He, he should have spelled it D-I-M, right? Uh, capital D-I-M yep. space yes. P-R. That's right. <laughs> okay. She put on that on his next certificate. Yes, yes. Um, oh, after the show, we need to, we need to, deco we need to, uh, do a quick debrief. I got to talk because we got to talk about the September seminar just oh, yeah. to get some things lined up. Sure. But I want to I want to share something with you. Um, okay. So this that Ty knows about. I want to share that with you guys at with okay. you afterwards. Nine. Oh, no, the one nine ten. There. Oh, I got uh, Lawrence Eugenio from Santa Rosa. Good to see you. But no. Um, oh, yeah. As far as the being concerned about uh, extinction. So. As you know, there's a critical mass that you need to continue anything on any 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 activity. It doesn't really matter what what it was. Remember, I said something about earlier today about the idea of hey, all these, these splintered groups not communicating, not being a community. Don't have to agree, but it, but uh, I think actually this I'll take one I'll take one of Tim's examples. Um, taekwondo has it right. Everybody that's branched out and done the different taekwondos, they still call themselves taekwondo, and that actually helps every single one of them, even if they don't get along. It's a it's a it's a net good. So with all these people that are splintered out there, maybe orphan, maybe whatever, you know, disenfranchised, whatever you want to call it, the diaspora, if there's no connection, then each one of those is a, is a lone root in the middle of this desert that can just die out. Good point. So that's, that's the concern, right? So if, mm -hmm. if there's not some sort of linkage underneath the sand in the roots of the matter, um, then there's, you know, having the ability to continue on is pretty rough. It's going to be an individual at best. I know 20 years from now, I think it's going to be very interesting with some of these systems. I hate to say it. Not that I want to be right. You know? <laughs> Sorry, different. you can I don't want anybody system. to fail. I don't want anybody, even if you're doing, you know, so maybe you're modern race, not yours, but somebody's my race. It's not how I do it, but you're doing it in the name of race, and you're actually giving props to Remy or whoever the right people were that your lineage was. That's pretty cool to me. Uh, keep that going and keep the 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 connections understood that are hopefully you know legitimate and real um and and make and make those props like so we know that combaton has started out with them training and and there's a very good deep connection kinship between the arts they're distinct mm -hmm. and different which is good um, but there's also connection which is also good same yeah. thing with our you know recognizing our Balintawak roots in modern that's a cool thing we're not Balintawak, but um i think knowing that helps actually both of us there you go. Well, you are right. <laughs> so anyway, okay. that's that's where I was coming from, and that's the short version. No, 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 no. Hey, that's I, I want. Yeah, the short version works. So yeah. well, well, let's let's think about this. It's about the gene pool. Okay, look at let's parallel us to the real world because here's the, here's the problem. People live in the fantasy world. Yeah, not me, not this, not there. How many animals have gone on the extinction warning list? Oh, quite a, yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Okay. Why is that? Because the numbers are? Diminishing. So, okay, especially since COVID hit. Okay. I I was, we were did a, we did a show the other day. We talked about DAS in the States, the gut Garney systems. And we we're trying to figure out how many people are doing it in the States. Mm -hmm. And it's less than 50. I'm like, well, then don't talk to me about being an organization. Don't talk. You got a training group over here. Because as 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 a non, here we go. So because now, now, Grandmaster Riddell and I had a conversation. We're all good. People in the Philippines I talked to, we're all good. U.S. director didn't too, take too kindly this, but didn't listen to what I was saying. So I'm going to say it here, you know. Um, as if I'm not a Filipino martial artist, or let's say I'm a Filipino martial artist, and they're trying to offer to me, you should come on to DAS. Well, I got 70-some-odd students in my school. Your whole organization has less members than my school. What's the benefit of me joining you? Right. You know, because if you're trying to recruit schools, schools, it, your organization should at least be as big as one school. Now, if you want to say that this is a chapter, I'm okay with that, or this is a training group, I'm okay with that. Um, but the thing here is, if Jeff Ramsey and Terrell Richardson stops teaching, 
tomorrow, yeah. the likelihood of that art continuing in the States is negligible. Mm. Okay. So Bobby Tabuata has the biggest gene pool of Balintua players out there. Seems to be growing and growing. If something was to happen to him, it would probably last a couple generations. I think that's fair. Okay. But some of the other lineages, okay, like the lineage I'm part of, the ungrouped through Ted Buat, who used to teach for Anchon. Hmm. I don't think it's going to continue in the in the context of its of of its uh, own when, branch. When just, and I'm sad that, about that. I know when you think about that, just in general, like yeah. some of these arts that they might not be around, like. It is kind of, it is kind of sad. It's got to be Paul. That's a good point. I mean, let, I mean, these are people I like. Okay, so you look at an art. Um, you know how many, you know, and 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 here's the problem. Like I listened to, I listened to you with, um, Dan Loman the other day. I, I chimed in a little because I had a moment. You did, yes. Yeah, and we talked about that. There's not many schools. Well, there are schools over here. The problem is the problem is we have a tendency of talking about the exception, not the norm. How many I mean, I was talking to a couple of guys on the West Coast. They have the same concerns about Combaton that I have for modern. Here are two of the Praces family systems had the biggest martial footprint on the globe. And ever since 2007 for Ernesto, when he stopped coming over here physically due to visa issues. And Remy passing in 2001, the arts have been shrinking. Is there a gene pool to go beyond? Shelly Millspaugh is doing a great job promoting Combaton here. But what happens when he is no longer promoting it? When he's no longer, like, really pushing it, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I mean, and June is a great advocate, is a great ambassador. But June's all over the place. Physically, he is all over know, the place to like do, do his career. Belgium? Like, where is he now? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know, you know. I so, think Belgium or I don't know. I could be wrong. But but the thing here is you don't have a dedicated academy of combatant to my knowledge. Academy. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking a club. I'm talking a full time academy, a headquarters that you can go train at. Which is it's farm teams in general with FMA, man. Like we don't have farm teams. And that what I mean by that specifically, of course, is kids. You know what I mean? Like, you know, bringing up the next generation, you know, and um <sighs> I mean, that's a big oh piece. Oh, my God. You're preaching. A, someone on one of my YouTube channels, I did FMA for kids. And the guy, well, I don't teach children. I don't think it's appropriate. I'm like, but then again, I don't have the demeanor. At least at least he admitted that he didn't have the demeanor. Okay, like, well, that's, that's acceptable. Okay. But, you know, but it's like, oh, I'm worried about certain techniques. Well, then don't teach everything. And then someone said, that's watering it down. No, it's not watering it down. You're keeping it's it going. age-appropriate material. Right, exactly. That's not wandering down. When I had the kid, when I started teaching kids FMA in 2002, did I give them a knife? Of course not. Padded stick, basic strikes, basic blocks, basic footwork for what they could handle and all that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't, don't want to have down. someone stabbing a perineum in second grade. That's a third no. grade technique, at least. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, in fifth grade, man, they're doing they're doing blue worm to the flywheel, come right down center. You know I mean? That's but, a sixth grader project. Okay, now this weekend when you go on this week's field trip, when we go to the slaughterhouse. Oh my gosh, but to your what point I mean? though, it's not watering down. You are you are perpetuating the art. You're using younger ages to do so. Which what? all the other arts do <laughs> so I, I, when i was at the boudoir this weekend paul and i did some knife flow oh was gm pogey there his uncle uh, pogey pogey was mia oh, um, i think he was i think he was scared because this guy fury looking dude showed up because that's, that's you know. my uh, my uh, my grandmaster so i just was wondering if you met him <laughs> uh okay well you know i i, I wish i would have known uh <laughs> and uh and and Rich just took it as a challenge, Dr. Tim. It is, and it will. Good, good, Rich. It, it's going to continue. There we go. And what's Jay saying there? Uh, pointing an eye open here about the succession where GMs are gone. There goes to all groups. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So, um, uh, I was up with Apollo. Yep. And we did a little knife flow thing. And I had no clue what he wanted. I, I don't know the rules. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what 
pr- protocol is. And we had a blast. Mm. But the first thing I told him was like, I don't do knife work. Matter of fact, like in our curriculum, I no longer teach any blade work specific until post black belt development. And we are an impact. To, I mean, listen, the, the system during World War II that Remy's taught taught the uh, um, taught the guerrillas to fight the mm-hmm. Japanese was bladed. So we okay. know it's there. Remy went the more humane aspect of things, okay. and we'll deal with the blade. And I like using the blade work. Like I've got uh, multiple blade templates I use to enhance open hand combatives. I also like using the blade in the hand to do the angles of attack because it gets the proper alignment because the round tool, sometimes people hit with the wrong sector of the stick. Hmm. They'll hit with the side when they meant to do the hammer. So, um, but I flowed with him and he's like, at, we're, at when we're done, I was like, I thought you said you don't do blade work. You know, and I'm like, no, I Remy taught movement. I do movement. I do sensitivity. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm a sensitive guy, man. <laughs> I cried during old yeller, you know. Um, but when I do this stuff, it's more about the flow. But anything we put in our hands, we could utilize. And and the thing here is that I took blade work that was a lot of times being overlooked in our training and put it in a modular programs post black belt to make sure it gets the the attention that it needs and enough time to have people have that level, that opportunity to build respect and then become desensitized at the same time. Because I think the problem with people doing weapon-based systems is they get too desensitized and lose all respect for the props. Uh, especially, I, I, yeah, I, I can appreciate that. Definitely. Um, okay. I got hey, one. Eric, how you doing, brother? I got another one here. This one I, I, I'm, I'm really curious to hear about. Um, okay. And it is bullshit seminars, do's and don'ts. Do have tie in, don't have me. <laughs> so, first, first do and don't. Okay. <laughs> so, so, seminars. Uh, what, what, what are you talking about? Like, I mean, we talk about this how to hold. This, no, this was teaching. one of your topics that you um, that you got that you were speaking on. The seminars, the do's and don'ts. Ah, uh, okay. So, well, uh, if you're going to host, then the do's are make sure that you have a a very open and upfront conversation with the instructor coming out to you to understand the responsibilities, both physically and financially. Um, don't assume because that usually bites you in the ass. Do have something written down in communication. Doesn't have to be a full blown contract, but somewhere we need to have that criteria. Don't host a seminar to make money, host a seminar to increase your knowledge. And by then you increase your money in the long run, because if you learn one new technique, you have it for the rest of your life. Nice. That's just me. Um, there's probably more. Um, Ty? PG, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you, you know, we've all been to seminars. We see the good and the bad, and it was a, it was a, and it was an approach to, it was, a, it was a discussion to, to focus on the goods and the bads, uh, lessons learned from both the perspective of the host, the seminar instructors, and us as attendees, right? There's all three of those levels have some important do's and don'ts, and I think we tried to cover those because it's easy to get caught up in one aspect or one viewpoint of those and that's at least six right from the provider and the consumer on each of those three mm-hmm. so you kind of have to factor the whole thing in because the whole package is what's going to get it to keep on going okay nice and, you know and and when you talk to someone okay listen here here's the thing and then um i want to talk what gm uh what uh, gm Renee just put down there listen um as a host yeah. As a host, I am a consumer. If I'm hiring Dean to come out and do a seminar, he's going to do what I ask him. I'm going to pay for that service. We have this communication. If he says, Tim, I don't teach that to this group, that group, the other group, or I don't teach this until you do this, or this is just personal development. I don't feel comfortable sharing it. We have these things, mm-hmm. um, but I'm paying for a service. So, if you want to get that service, you need to outline what's going on. And like, you know, I teach multiple things 
And if you want me to teach Balintwak, you have to ask me to teach Balintwak. Oh, is it right? You're just not going to assume that you're going to go in there. Right. If you want me to teach Combaton or whatever. And like, because I had, so one of the, one of my teachers is Dr. Meng Ji. He teaches mm. Bondo. And I actually got Remy and Walt, Remy and G to do two seminars together before he passed. And um, he would come up and do all these different seminars. And the guys, when I'd meet the Bondo guys, because usually what happens is you pick three topics. You know, you, you pick a knife, you'll pick an open hand system. So you might say, all right, I'm going to do the Kukri. I'm going to do Bondo boxing. And then I'll do one of the animal systems for my open hands. Or maybe I'll do a second weapon. Okay. Um, and there's all these different things to choose from. I would have them do long sword. I had them do short sword. I had them do short staff. I had them do walking cane. I had them do pocket stick. I had them do Bondo boxing. Uh, I, I would go through all these lists. And the guys are like, uh, how, how do you get him to do all this stuff? I say, Dr. G, I need you to teach this. Well, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm paying him for a service. Mm. I tell him what I want. If it's not what, if, if and if he won't teach that, I'll find a topic that I want that he's offering me. And if he doesn't have a topic I want, I'm not having him in and I'm yeah, not paying you're not, him. You're not, <laughs> you're not paying him to come. You know, if I'm asking you to come and do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and you say, no, I can't do that, Tim, for whatever reason, I'll find another guy to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, exactly. It's a customer service industry. So, um, so Renee was good saying on succession, we have an established succession policy. Uh, oh, and now some of that uh, we learned from our overlooked policies of our teachers, as we always say, we must flow and continue. Just sharing. So I did that at my camp recently, and it's actually been uh, very very public about I've, it's been subtle for years but we made a big thing about it so um i am healthy when i say this because when i made the speech someone thought i was sick and then not just yeah. in the head yeah well i mean that we know that already <laughs> so um for years i've said listen if something happens to me pg's tie craig mason and chad doolin are to take things over and guide the next generation of successors. They're not successors. They are there. I mean, because listen, we're all approximately the same age. So if one of us goes, the rest of probably, should, unless it's not unnatural, we're all probably going around the same time. Right. Um, so we have a big party wherever we end up. <laughs> but um, the but if something was to happen to me, you talk to these guys. If you can't get a hold of me. You talk to these guys. Talking to these guys is like talking to me. If you need a hardcore decision done now and you can't get a hold of me, they will do it. And then if there's any repercussions, it will be towards them. Because, But there shouldn't be because I give them the permission to do what needs to be done for the benefit of our organization. Mm. Even if they get it wrong, Valhalla is where Rich says we're going to end up. That's cool. Even if he, they get it wrong, they made a decision. You know, here's the thing. Get off the bench, take a swing. I'd rather have you strike out than not, not, not swing at all. Attempt. Sure. Sure. So I have three guys in place for our organization mm -hmm. in case something happens to me. And then if it gets to the point where they no longer feel that they have the ability to, to uh, do those jobs, they need to find their replacements. I asked them once again publicly uh, before the event or before the, the awards – and that's when I promoted them to ninth degree, which we don't do grandmaster at ninth degree. Uh, and then I gave him a little token of my appreciation. Do you have yours with you at the moment? Yep, it's in the in the drawer upstairs. Okay, so I um, I'll be right back. Uh, I'm gonna t I have a I need a, a bathroom break, and I'm gonna grab this because yeah. it's in the other room. Yeah, do so, and I, I can go on to the next one. So, sure. okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Mick Dojo, if you have. A successful school are are you because it if it gets construed as McDojo, it's automatically construed that you are watering down and all that. So your opinion on if FMA schools that when folks think that they're McDojos because you're not doing the backyard mentality right. or this and that. What say you on that? Well, yeah, that came about because people get wrapped around the axle on misconstruing things. So, so to my mind, and so everybody probably has their own definition, right? McDojo would be something that is a school that panders and doesn't doesn't give any good material and doesn't produce good practitioners, whatever the art is, right? So, 
is a school that's making money successful automatically that? No. Anybody who thinks that is not paying attention because you could be a successful school and do all of the great things, or you could also be a backyard school and be giving no good product and no good people. So it's really the success could be an indicator or it could not. You could be successful because you are producing good people. Does that make you a McDojo? That doesn't make any sense. No, I... Oh, that's a good one. By the way, uh, the guys I bought a, a set, we have a matching set of diesel watches. There you go. Mm. So the four of us are the watchmen, not to be confused with the Canadian band or the, the comic. We're better than the comic book. There you go. Wow. We're real. This, uh, so is it, this makes, is this a, kind of an elite... Second group there in the four. No, this is this is like the Superman Watt hate guys. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so no, you, no, this is this no, this is I'm saying for my birthday, Remy bought me a Gucci watch. Ooh. And you know, when I was making this presentation, I wanted to make it very special. And a piece of paper with my signature on it to me is not special. It is, but that doesn't these guys are like my these are the friends are the family you choose okay we've they've traveled the world with me yeah ty's been in the philippines what five four or five times with us no just two just two times okay yeah. but we've been in the philippines we've gone throughout the united states he's we all went to texas together and then he's going doing his own things and we're we're teaching in connecticut now we're the invasion we're here together and all this other stuff Craig Mason has probably tr put more flying miles in with me than anyone else on there. Chad Doolin has known me the longest of the group because, I mean, he knew me in the probably the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and there's I've had other friends that have known me quite long, but these guys have been really putting it in. And like Remy bought me the watch, I decided to buy them the watch. And it's just more of a personal touch, something that my teacher did for me, and I'm passing it forward. Um, now, as far as the uh, the McDojo thing, I guess you have to define McDojo. Does McDojo mean bullshit martial arts? And then there's a lot of backyard groups that are bullshit martial arts. Most of the Filipino yeah. guys I see out there are bullshit martial arts in the Philippines. Um, there's a lot of guys that, that that I look at and going like, hey, you know, whatever. Now, if, if you're talking about selling rank, yeah. there's a lot of backyard groups to sell rank too. Okay, there's a lot of Filipinos that sell rank. Matter of fact, wait a minute. Let's not go down that path right this moment. Yeah. I think Renee knows the people I'm talking about, actually. <laughs> hey, John, how you doing, brother? Definitely know those who over there that have been known to sell rank. I guess the point would be is don't make assumptions, right? If you're really concerned about quality, look for the quality, whether or not the rank or the or the success or the names are there. Are they good quality? Materials, teachers, practitioners, whatever the quality is you're looking at, that stands on its own. And if it's not, then it's not. It has nothing. Okay, let me ask you a question, Dean, because you've actually seen us. Okay. <laughs> so, um, do you know if anyone has a bigger FMA school? Okay. How many people have bigger FMA schools than me? Than you? I, I don't. I don't think anyone. The. Uh, okay. I think you have the biggest. I know Michael Ruby. Uh, we kind of identified Mike Ruby, you, the guy in Florida. Apollo Ladra. No. <laughs> guy. Apollo Ladra doesn't have a big school. No, 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 no. But the other guy in Florida, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, someone else no. is actually. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so, no. um, <laughs> okay. But we, 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 we figure that I, if I'm not the top. Hey, what's, what's Apollo? Do you, I mean, what's, do you know offhand Apollo's numbers? No, and I know. I uh, see the thing here is Apollo, like myself, has an organization, and I don't know yeah. how much of that's tied into the school. So He's I know, I know Bobby Lodge is a Taekwondo affiliation. Yeah, yeah. So and... I mean, there's it's a different animal, and I don't want to be disrespectful. It's just a different animal. Different, I don't know yeah. if if the school is a standalone program that can survive without the organization yeah. for the longest time. Uh, mine were married together. Now I don't have to teach anymore on seminars if I don't want to because the yeah. school's doing so that, let's just go that with, well. You probably. So I'm in the top five, right? We well, when we did when we narrowed it down to the actual like using the criteria that we established as far as full time, you're relying that as your income source. I think we narrowed it down. I think it was in the teens. Far okay. as school, there were a couple questionable ones. Far yeah. as criteria, but but 
Yeah. If we if we start crunching the numbers, I'm probably in the top five. No, no, no. I did. That's I, okay. I'm sure you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you've seen me on the floor. Correct. What you know? What do you? What are your thoughts? Oh, and that that's uh, one of the things I forgot to mention in the intro, and I'm a little disappointed in myself. Is that uh, the reason why I enjoy you two guys so much? Is that when you guys kind of took me under <laughs> took me under your wing in the uh, New Hampshire thing there. Um, I got to witness your guys teaching because I, I wanted to see that. I wanted to see the interaction with the bigger groups. I wanted to see the controlling of the tempo, the floor, the dynamic. And um, I learned a lot. And you both have that generalship and um, something that I know I needed to work on pre going there. But I can honestly say after witnessing you guys, I did leave more confident and a better feeling how to achieve that. So, so so obviously at any school you're going to have, and no matter how court they are, they're going to have the good guys, the average guys, and then everybody else that tries their best, but they all support the team no matter what. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have my dojo rank people and then I'm going to have my nationally ranked people mm-hmm. and everything in between. And uh, yes, Brian, you get the, the bro 10% discount, but there's the, <laughs> but there's the 30% dot to service charge. So really, really that 10% went to now, <laughs> to now 20%. <laughs> then you get the VIG. I got to get my VIG, you know, but which I mean, is, which listen, is collected listen. weekly. <laughs> yeah. So listen, we, we have to be business like that's why, churches have gone out of business mm-hmm. because i mean or if you look at the scouts uh, whatever they're called these days okay that's fine i can do that yeah. <laughs> um you know you with with non-for-profit organizations you need to hire professionals to keep the doors open mm-hmm. you need to be professional you don't have to do it for a profession mm-hmm. and those who teach this for the love of the art because and that's exactly how i started now i made my passion my profession the still thing here is when I was using other facilities, let's say, hey, I just, I'm running place space somewhere, I don't want it coming out of my pocket. I'd mm-hmm. rather, I mean, as, especially as I put tens of thousands of dollars in my martial instruction, countless miles on the vehicles traveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, over, and then I mean, okay, here's my, here's just my Balintwak. Just my Balintwak. I did private lessons with Ted Buett for like five years. Monthly, I would do a round trip drive to Detroit. That was eight to nine hours round trip in a day because I would do get up in the morning, go train, and come back. Okay, all right. Um, I start crying. You know, so I did that for five years monthly. Rich would sometimes meet me there, and we would share lessons because I'd watch his lesson, he would watch my lessons, and we got a lot more out of it. You know. Um, so, you know, think about that for five years, what kind of wear and tear, gas, and all this other stuff. A lot. Now I've got to pay for rent, and then people wonder why I'm charging so much for tuition. Because you're paying for my education, the education I put in. You put you're in, getting a yeah. You don't have to do any of this. Why do you think and doctors the- get paid so much? And well, here's the, here's the thing. People, want, people complaining about people making martial arts a business want their cake, and they want to eat it, too. So they want to have the free martial arts, but they want the business to just magically survive on its own without the wherewithal to do so. And guess what that takes? It takes resources and money. So we should not get split around and and misconstruing business practices with martial arts, instruction, material, et cetera. Uh, Here's the thing. All the people that are bitching about it, did they pay for their, did they pay their teachers one way or another? Yeah. And if it was, they care about it, they really care about it. I'm going to pay yeah. for stuff I care about. Uh-huh. I mean, you must pay for now. Oh, listen, if you listen, I, I know there's a uh, there's a judo guy I did a seminar with. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. When you went to train with him, because he had he had another gig, but he had a this guy was a national rank competitor. So you had two options: you paid for lessons, or you dragged a log. Now, like, like he had a logging area. Mm. So I was like, I need these dragged down here. So you can grab one and bring it down. You can drag a tree to me or pay me 50 bucks. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All, all right. You know, <laughs> hey, why, why did people in Japan wash the floors? Because that's what they did. That was, that was, they would bring, or if people brought you food or beverage or whatever, that's how you paid. Paying for lessons have been around for centuries. So that's all bullshit. No, no, no. 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 I like what you said. I like what you said also about the nonprofits. Nonprofits have to be run by like a business because yeah. otherwise the nonprofit is going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I work for a nonprofit. 
we do not make corporate money. We have to pay all of our people. We have to pay our overhead and we have to pay to do the work. And that takes resources as well. And as a shameless plug, I will be doing next year. Well, um, I'll be doing um, a modular course for FMA professionals. So an online course to help people take, I want to do like a four, a four class series uh, where it'll be alive like this, but if you can't make it, you can have a digital download and either way you'll get a digital copy of this. I'm also looking to do a physical camp in Buffalo with a tour and as well as things. So one of the things I think we're missing a lot, and it doesn't matter where it comes from is open hand combative. So like Serata to my knowledge has no punching and kicking. Well, I can help with that. I can I help give you a business um, structure. You know, and now he's thinking think about it. On that. I, I think you're right. Uh, if I had to guess, I don't think Serrano. Well, Balintwak has no open hand combatives. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Paulo. He goes, you know, I like Balintwak because this much does. Like, PG2 no, that's does. Bobby Tablada. <laughs> AI does. Um, and Asano Blend, obviously. Let's blend. That's not uh, Modern Needs, obviously. <laughs> right. Um, Huh, yeah, I think there's a few actually that there's, don't. I don't know many FMA systems that teach open hand combatives. Yeah. I, I, I know a lot of FMA guys that'll pull C lot in or or Ponatukan or Which I points. some prefer that and I, I can I see why, you know. Yeah, I don't I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. But if you want to have a standalone okay, if, listen, at the end of the day, why don't Filipino schools survive? The lack of commitment of the craft and uh, Serata have punching and kicking. Oh, yes, I've never do. seen it. Well, we don't know. I we got don't know. Nick, Mer Nick Merchant's one of my Piper students. He's a big Cabalist guy. I have so to ask him. Whomever, uh, whomever this is, Facebook user. I think it's Paul. Please, uh, I think Paul. I think yeah. I've I've never seen any Serata guy teach open hand combatives. Now it could be because they're focusing like Remy did. Oh, you already have that, so I'm not going to show you. Oh, maybe. But I have, and I hung around Carlito Banjak a lot, and Bruce Jutnik, both direct students and nothing. Nick? One from Max Sacramento. Huh. Sacramento. So, oh, so Max. Oh, Max. Yeah, but that's uh, he might. Yeah, Paul's onto something, but it's also. I don't want to speak out of turn here. I'm mistaken. Yeah. I'm just citing this from an interview I did where one had one thing, one brought the other thing, and voila, you had, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I, but I think Paul's onto something there. Yeah, Two week so. discount. Oh my God. Yeah, you better. Okay. Um, I was going to add one little thought there. Is the, uh, on the other side of things, right? People running as a business. Um, if they're going to run out of the business, there's two choices there, right? Some people might want to get into martial arts because they're going to make money. Maybe if that's their only goal, you might not be as interested in it. It's not a guarantee, but I get where that's coming from. However, if they are, that's what they're trying to do, I would have to question their <laughs> what they're really thinking because you're not going to make a ton of money in martial arts no matter who you are in this role in the dice. But on the other end of that, the people that are willing to teach martial arts and make their living are like what John George just describes. I want to do, I want to get my passion to let me make a living from my passion. Don't you want to learn from that guy who's doing it for his passion because he loves it? So you want him to succeed at his business and you want to learn that from guy. He's willing to step out there and teach his run a business on his passion. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I listen, all I was doing was looking to, pay for the rent for the place I was using and not having it coming out of my pocket during the day working for advanced auto parts and pizza hut, you know, cause that's what I was. I just had a club and then, I'll, then I started doing actually 91. And then uh, and I started doing seminars out of town. Living in so the, things down by the river. <laughs> yep. While you're working in your auto park. <laughs> <Wasn't that bad? laughs> yeah. yep. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want money coming out of my check. Right. Yeah, I get you. To I pay for you. the for, to pay pay for a building so or rental weird. space. Yep. We're, we're going up. We're coming up on two hours, and it sounds like <laughs> we want, always do that. Yeah, I know, but no, it, it's great. And you want to have a powwow after our talk? Yeah, just um, a short one. Just a short one. Okay, it's a quick story. Um, I, yeah, absolutely. Every time I get you guys, are you going to ask that other question that you were going to ask? Yes. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your um? Future, I mean, so you know, what, what's inside for the for FMA talks specifically? What's uh, what's future goals? What do you, what do you guys like? What do you guys have? Your eyes domination. On? <laughs> so what uh, 
Where, where are your future goals, you guys thinking? Um, Ty? Uh, I want to keep getting uh, want to keep getting people on there. Um, occasionally, there's always new something new we want to, to talk about. One of the things I want to maybe explore is if we run out of those things or if we want to change a pace is take some old footage that both of us have maybe of Remy. And this I haven't talked to Tim about this. This is a whole new thing. Take some old footage of Remy and we can talk about it. And, and while, you know, and, and call, you know, kind of uh, call some shots and, and talk about our experiences, you know, have a have that as a context for a conversation that's completely yeah. organic at the time. That's just a thought I, I had. I you guys show some footage, man. That would be, I think that would be outstanding. Yeah. Well, one of the things I talked about this past weekend was the someone I did a I did a Sinwali application drill for a, a single Sinwali seizing drill that Remy did. Yeah. And um, and one of the things I talked about was you know I someone asked me what do you think and all this other stuff about you know talk about Remy and I go uh, what are your takeaways I go you know I'm happy and sad about the footage that's out there of Remy. I'm happy of that any footage is out there, but I'm sad because it will never do him justice. When you see an Asano, there's no disconnect. Will you see? Because it's it's not, it doesn't have the feeling that Remy had. Mm-hmm. See, Remy would touch you and you felt it in your toes. Your neighbors would feel it in your toes. Um, and that doesn't translate on footage. Like same thing with working with Dr. G, although Dr. G has other skills that translate better on video. There's some people that really show better. I don't think Remy shows anywhere near as good as a live demo. And it certainly doesn't have that visceral component of, um, you know, it's, it's funny. So if you ever watch America's Got Talent, sometimes they'll say, now listen, guys, watching on TV, it, it takes away this whole thing. And I remember, I, I you know, we, we love lacrosse, and I'll go to a lacrosse game in person or watch on television. Oh, you love lacrosse? Oh, I played in college. Oh, I love, yeah. oh congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, when I when I when they when I was in school, they didn't offer it. Once I graduated, they offered it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. of course, right. <laughs> so, um, but I uh, Buffalo Bandits, you know, they're one of the top teams in the in the league, and uh, so we world. love going to the show. I mean, it's, and it's a great show. You know, I remember when I was in Germany the one time, Dieter taught me to took me to a Dortmund game, and oh my God, I can't, I am I. Oh, <laughs> and you cannot explain it because that energy is a whole nother. And that part doesn't do well when it comes to Remy. You can um, feel with your body much more than you can see unless you're really, really well, well trained. I mean, Remy circles for just one piece of it were so small inside with what you're feeling. Feeling is one thing, but seeing it, did you know what you were seeing? You might not. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, right, feeling it, no. Like that, yeah. Oh, but that would be cool to do the videos. Yeah, I think so. Okay, actually, because... Uh, I never saw Remy do that. Well, here, look at it right here. There you got the proof, right? Right. That's what yeah, I'm well, trying to that's... convince, like Brandon. Like, with, he's got just hours and hours and hours of GM Ministry Simone. I'm like, I saw allowed? him and his father in uh, in Vegas. I've seen it. I mean, but oh not God, the, not the '90s where Ministry Simone was just doing hanging stuff. I'm talking about like earlier, and it's it, it, wow. you just can't believe it. I'm like, every once in a while, man, just put something out there. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah, it's got to be that big. Yeah, just that mm-hmm. big. So. Three five seconds, three to five. That's yeah, yeah, ten mean. seconds. Uh, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, now you're getting greedy. Well, I am. When it comes nothing to, wrong with that. When it comes nothing to that wrong footage, with that. I'm very greedy. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are any other future goals for you guys? FMA talk. You know, conti- I think just continue the uh have, continue getting more people right. out there. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing well, wrong you know, my, that. my goal, goal is. That's my goal. goal, okay. So my personal goal, it helps my. Okay, so the Tim goal is that this helps my, Ty and Tim's brand. So mm-hmm. people are recognizing us. I'm getting people calling me about the seminars. I'm, I'm seeing people at multi style seminars coming up and say, "Hey, I love your show." And I never thought we're looking at it. Uh, when I was doing the Modern East minutes uh, all the time, I, I I was in Atlantic City. And we walked down the hallway, and a guy goes, "You're the Modern East minute guy." I'm like, "Damn, okay, all right." It's- um, so, uh, I mean, obviously, cause this is my business, I'm trying to increase my brand that way, sure. but what I, I, my, I want to increase the modern Arnie's brand as a whole. I want to secondary. Okay. Primary prices, family systems, get more visibility and understanding. Secondly, the FMA community gets more visibility and understanding okay. third, maybe, and uh, this is a long shot. It brings us together a little closer 
at least if people, because of what I say, sometimes people don't give me the opportunity to reiterate what I'm trying to say. They hear, they have that visceral response. And like Ty, I'll tell you, I, there's a lot of stuff I see online and hear online and I'll call him up. I go, is it me or is that guy a jerk? And sometimes it's like, Tim, I think it's you. And then a week or two later, it was like, okay, no, that was that guy being a jerk. But, you know, but, but I get both sides of that. Um, so I know what it's like to, to look at things and going, okay, I got I to gotta count to 10. Although, just remember this, if you count to 10, that means it's premeditated. So <laughs> uh, I would like to see it bring our art together. I would like to see people understand me more on what I'm hoping that it's not polarizing people more so that they actually sit there and say, listen, if they listen to what we say, okay, if they really listen to what you say, even the people that I don't care for, I don't think I've ever trash talked any of them. Ty? Trash talk. Oh, is it like really personal attacks and things like that? I, I'm know. not talking about saying, hey, this jerk did this to me or right, whatever. Right, right, right. Well, I'm saying that this is a piece of shit. Yeah. Don't hang out with him. He's whatever. Oh. I've never done character assassination. And if I did, Ty wouldn't be part of the show. Yeah. No, I mean, but you bring truth on all that, and you're just, you're doing it. Uh, you know, I, I'm hoping I mean, that it brings a positive light on FMA because sooner or later people are going to stop being jerks on certain things and leave me alone. But <laughs> no, that's going to give me content. Well, that, that that conversation, Pete, is certainly part of it. So even if Tim does is says something that's very polarizing or hits you the wrong way, you know what you can do with him? You can talk to him. I mean, really, you can. You don't know that because you may maybe he's not in front of you. Yeah, it's like send um, a message to him. Hey, you know, I just want to get more clarity on what you said. Maybe I misinterpreted. Maybe, you know what I mean? I mean we made a comment on the show the other day, and uh, someone asked Ty about it. They thought I was being a little rough on something, on someone. And um, Ty was given the opportunity to talk about stuff. And it put a different perspective on things. You know, um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll comment right what it was. I made a comment. Terrell Richardson made a comment, said about he learned modern Arnese. And I go, well, where did you learn it from? Or where did, where did his teacher get it from? It says Remy, Remy Jr. I'm like, well, no, that's no, no, that's not legitimate modern Arnese. <coughs> because he learned it from, he learned the Guck Arnese from Rodel de Guck. Okay. You know, Rodel was not around the 26 years of Remy's evolution. And if they knew the art the way they did when they went on their first tour, why did they fly a, a, a Rodel de Guck over to help them teach? Right, right. Now, Rodel and I had a conversation about this, and I'm glad they did it because I would have never met Rodel. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I wouldn't have had that initial meeting with Rodel. Mm -hmm. and we've had a great friendship. But the thing here is the modern uh, – listen, if he's supposed to be teaching modern ace, Remy would have put his name in the will for modern arnies he didn't give the kids the will because the art because the kids weren't practicing the art mm -hmm. now when i said this someone asked well what does that mean for all this modern arnies certification that i have from this lineage and like the short answer is doesn't mean shit for modern arnies the long the long answer is well if the training was good that's great it's just the the banner that it's under is incorrect that's all mm -hmm. doesn't mean the training's bad no but if you wanted to do remy praises modern arnies those diplomas don't represent that. Okay. Yeah. So, so is, is that a negative thing? Okay. You know, people might not like because I'm saying it, but I mean, it it, it is what it is. You know. Mm. I mean, let's let's think about this. You can, you're a Burton guy. You've got the old Burton, not you, but there's the old Burton certification, and the new Burton certification. Mm. What if someone got the old certification, hadn't seen it for a decade? And now comes on the scene. How much, and I know he would do the right thing and make things, but how valuable is that certification today? That uh, old cert with the new stuff? How relevant? How relevant? I'm not. No. Okay. So, but could that person be brought up to speak? Oh, we're, absolutely. Absolutely. That was the point. Yeah. But absolutely. without having a conversation with me, yeah. they have that knee jerk. And I'll, 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 I'll be the first to admit that it was, a quick response. It may have been because uh, this is actually uh, I've I've been really been having a hard time with Junior doing stuff um, because he had the opportunity to work with us and he chose not to. Um, he could have gone to Remy's students and say, "I want to help promote my father's art." 
And I don't think the, in my opinion, I don't think the motivation from doing martial arts is um, genuine. Uh, Remy's estate disappeared overnight. And I think it was more to try to get something out of it. You know, that, that they felt that the students ripped Remy off, rem, you know, and it's a long torrid story, but you know, the thing here is, um, it's not an accurate represent, in my opinion, my opinion, it's not an accurate representation because Remy was a, a child. Junior was a child when Remy left. So he really, what training he did would be negligible. Right. I would ask a very simple question. If it wasn't a passion for you the whole time he was around and when you're growing up and you could have taken advantage of that passion, why exactly is it a passion for you now, supposedly? Yeah, yeah, that's a good, legit question. I mean, right. Yeah, we saw Demetrio twice. Once he went to uh, Dan Anderson's camp, and the the, story, the the report I got was he was too busy playing football than anything else, uh, and he would have been a teenager at the time. And then he and his wife stopped over at the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania camp when he used to live on the East Coast. Um, we've never seen a Prace's family member pick up a stick while Remy was alive. So, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so, uh, did you see that uh, message I sent you? I don't, you? You brought it up the other day. I don't know if it's still relevant there, uh, Dean. Oh, let me you just send me the messenger. I No, I sent it doing the chat. Host chat. You don't do you don't know how to use your software? <laughs> of course I do. I just no. I just I, I just wasn't you. sure we I just wasn't sure we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. You you're just you just you're not you're not used to someone else knowing how your software works. <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. I just <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh Oh, I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you brought that up. The I'm only saying that because you brought that up the I other did, night. I did, I did, I yep. did. And if not everyone was here that night. Yep, I did. I did. Hey, Sanchi. Um, hey. He's oh, you're Here's a funny one. Yeah, like, I'm going to oh, yeah. have my first uh, yeah. Philippine affiliate in Mindanao. In Mindanao, oh, yeah. nice. In Mindanao. So guess where I'm going on my next trip? Sachi, I didn't know you were. Uh, I'm not going to Minden now. <laughs> well, you can't. You don't have plans. <laughs> That's right. Back. All right, all right. So, uh, okay, we got powwow. Um, yeah, we're going. We're at two hours. Um, in Minden now. Wow. All right. So, uh, but hey, this has been uh, wonderful. I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, obviously. I don't see this. Oh, so you don't want to. You don't want to hit that last one. You want to hit it? Oh, go ahead. You know what? Go. Oh no, no. I mean, you were going to ask about it, so that's why I didn't no, know no, if you no. wanted to do okay, it. Okay, let's do. No, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm, then we can wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> titles. So, uh, how, okay. So titles and so I know that's kind of broad and generic. So what about far as GM? How do these come about within the? FMA world, GM, PG, lock on guru, guru, everybody associates with teacher. But what about some of the other ones? What do you guys, GM primary? Let's, uh, I guess let's go from the top to the bottom. <laughs> so, Is that the top anymore? I can't tell. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ty? <laughs> I'm still, I'm going to maintain what I've always said the whole time. I'm old school, came up, uh, you know, martial arts in the 80s and Kung Fu circles, there was one grandmaster and that was the head of the system for better or worse. Uh, and Remy lived that model to the best of my knowledge and my understanding while he was alive as well. So there was the one. So it wasn't associated with rank, although there's an assumption. Um, but it was, who, who is that head? So who, what the head might, might, might change, right? By, by, by maybe continent or whatever. And I've seen some of that. But yeah, it's generally, my, my take is one. And that's what I'm understanding what Remy, even in his original books, referred to. Okay, but what about when he passes? Does that <laughs> open the door for others or no? I don't so have an he, opinion on this. I'm just yeah, kidding. Oh, okay, I'll, well, okay, first of all, I'm going to do the other end. I think the Grandmaster title came from outside the Philippines. Yeah, I because I, yeah, we're, we're, Because Ty addressed yeah. what it means to him, and I feel the very same way. And then I, uh, I think... The or the the origins of these titles was competing with Japanese martial arts. I totally agree with that, but okay, but I, just I, like I, the uniforms, I like what uh, PG Tai saying. However, yeah. the GM dies, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Does that make allowance for others to now be coined GMs or no? I'll take my take on that real fast. My take is, um, so there's an easy one in those circles. The model that I said it would be, hey, you know, whoever the next inheritor is, sure. The next um, inheritor would be coined, could be coined GM. Could be. They might have to grow into it. And I've see, actually okay. seen that in modern, even in FMA circles. There's at least one person I can think of who was probably around master level when they inherited, and they are working their way to grow into it, and they're doing the right thing, which is awesome. Uh, and okay. he's a great, great, great guy. Um, but that's that's my take. Now, the other thing is maybe it splinters into multiple organizations. You could have an organizational, I guess, I suppose, but it, you you would want to make it warranted, right? If it's an organization of three, what the heck does that mean and what's it for? So one of the things that you can factor into there is, okay, layers uh and i sort of go by the conceptual model if you've got if you're if you need to be a gm presumably you have a lot of masters under you and are responsible for them you're responsible for something right and same thing with master on down to teachers right presumably as a master you created a bunch of teachers and are responsible for them okay. um that's one way to look at it why are you a teacher because you have students why are you a master because you have teachers why are you a grandmaster because you have masters you have that's masters one way to look at it teachers who have students but i don't but i don't like the idea of multiple grandmasters that's just ties old school curmudgeonly self um and the way i look at it now for titles who are they important to only the people in that system or style or organization so just because mm -hmm. i have my preferences i'm not going to poo poo anybody else's where they are i just know what my preferences are Okay. Um, if your organization is set that, hey, the top three ranks are going to be grandmasters, okay. I just don't know what it means to me, but that's how you're structured. That's your business. Got it. Okay. I don't use the title of grandmaster when it applies to modern because it came from Ernesto and Comaton. Um, and uh, I feel the same way. Okay, so there's the modern and East grandmasters right now, and, 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 and GM Rene is listening, and he's one of the recipients. That's okay. Um, I still go with there's only one. Okay. That being said, that being said, um, I think we could have 10th degrees without a, without a grandmaster title. Okay. We, in our, you see, here's the problem. What well, the problem I have with, the, with a lot of the modern East people right now, I want to use that as the example at the moment. They're using the Comaton or even the Dillman karate rank structure for titles. So in Dillman karate, you get a grandmaster title at seventh degree. In Combaton, eighth and ninth are grandmaster, and tenth is great grandmaster. Um, so, um, my GM title came from Ernesto, but he made a point of saying, "I can't rate you and rank you in my brother's art, but I can rank you in mine." Okay. Which then would be the same for Roberto, because if Remy couldn't, or if Ernesto couldn't do it, Roberto sure as hell shouldn't have been doing it. Mm. Um, because he, uh, and, and and they're all three are world class martial arts, but Ernesto or Roberto really didn't have that organizational base. He's small uh, in 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 numbers. A lot of the guys worked with him, but he didn't have his own thing like his two brothers did. Um, and like I said, if Ernesto said that, I, I would have no problem with Erne Roberto promoting people in Hinegran and Istamano because it's because that is his art. Okay. Remy didn't promote them they are not in his will so you know and that's where i'm coming from on this um okay well, okay here's a but okay so if i'm understanding you guys correctly okay gm dies if there was a designated heir he could be gm but there was no designated heir and so and people start feeling the gaps kind of restructuring things doing what they feel like because the predecessor died how about that is that kind of what i'm getting from you guys i i think i'll say this i think okay i am not going to use grandmaster as it applies to modern arnis until the community gets behind me to do such okay. i think there should now there could be there could be merit to having a gm in the philippines the european or the europe or europe and the americas that we could have a discussion on okay. but let's using modern release at the moment there's what 10 or 12 of them right now for what GMs? yeah and in remy's book so here, here's the thing remy's book at the time it was with ty the, tell us what the book said well remy said that there's the one 
the eight, like and a, about the years. The one oh, ring that to, was gosh, that was the one ring to rule them all. Right, but that was oh. Oh, he ta- he said that he's the grandmaster because he had yeah. twenty seven years of experience. Okay. And then now he said he, that again when he re released it twenty years later. He he re released the book, but he didn't rewrite the years in like he did because then it would have been fifty years of experience. And some people say, "Oh, I've been training for twenty seven years." Well, so oh, so of your but students. He put that so, when the book came back out, and yeah, he put it, but he didn't update that portion. And it, okay, so here we go. Okay, at the time of his passing, he had fifty plus years of experience. Gotcha. And he promoted no one to grandmaster. Right. So, but but people are saying, well, the book says this. Stop it. You can't base on so, the law. Okay. No, so it. now you've got, let me see, um, Rodel de Guck, Renee Tungson, Bamba Dulai, Jerry Dela Cruz, Dieter Canoodle, um, Dan Anderson, uh, Brian Zolinski, um, Kelly Warden, who merits being a grandmaster, but he doesn't wave the modern Ernie's banner. Uh, now, the IMAF says all seven of the Masters of Tappy Tappy supersede all ranks, so they're above Grandmaster. And they recently promoted two people, Seventh Degrees, to Grandmaster, which is Earl Tullis and uh, and Brian Johns. Now, let me see. There's 10, so that's 17. 17. Um, and a bunch of these people may have never produced a Master, let alone a Black Belt. Um, you know, the, the, the wood, okay, so there's seven Masters of Tappy Tappy that took over the art in my opinion, the coup um, of the seven of them totally at the time of his Remy's passing, they may have produced a total of, of 10 black belts between the group. Um, so you got a lot of people who are untested uh, masters out there doing things. And the thing here is we have it hardwired in our curriculum that to go up and rank, you need to produce more students. If you're not producing more black belts, why? Okay. So, how can you be a grandmaster if you haven't produced masters? Let's start with that. And the problem in the Philippines, and I'm not saying it's the modern Arnis world over there, but is this, you go up and, oh, hey, grandmaster, how you doing, grandmaster? How you doing, grandmaster? How you doing, grandmaster? It's a good old boys club over there. And those, and those grand, and a lot of those grandmasters out there, my students would clean the floor with them from an education point, structure, technique, and fighting, I'll I and I'll listen. Got no problem. I'll, I'll bring one of my seventeen-year-olds over there, and I'll say, "Go ahead, have fun with her, and see what happens." You know, um, and you know. But the thing here is, we, like I said, when you you got to come to. The, have you been in the Philippines yet? No, it's on the bucket list. Okay, so when we have Puti House, the White House, <laughs> um, you got to come because we'll take you to Lanetta Park in the morning, okay. where where the cool ones are at. And then we'll see the night, you know, sure you, so long as you don't where the freaks off, come out. You won't drop me off in town, though, at night? No, 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 I won't talk. No, 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 no. I might pimp you out somewhere. I just haven't decided where that's going to be. Um, There's a couple so, of serious groups at night, but I prefer the morning group, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely on the bucket so, list. I just, you know what it is? It's yeah. not that I can't go or I won't go or I don't want to go. I hear about that. 22 hours on a plane. And me being, and <laughs> no, 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 no. We get a 16. We got it down, Pat. 16? Yeah. Okay. We have a direct flight. You co- Okay. You get to Buffalo. Yeah. I know that's going to be a long-ass trip. Fine. I'll drive us to Toronto, and it's one plane straight over. Listen, my, my first one, it was 30 hours each way because of an eight-hour layover in yeah, Taipei. That's- Literally, the, the plane air, the movie airplane. The Drop movie. them off on Roxas. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, listen, it's not that bad. And listen, I, I tell you what, really all you would, you would have a good time with us because we travel to see everybody. Yeah. We don't see. Now, listen, for those who are interested in this, okay, because Renee Tungsten was talking about this the other week. If you don't have the hookups, you go to the FMA Festival because he they did, bring yes. all the instructors. He did mention that. He did mention okay. that. If you don't have the hookups. Yeah. But if you do, you want to travel with people like us because we actually, you know, I've actually had people from the festival watch the. Okay, so if you saw the documentary, yeah. a couple of Dieter's people were talking to me like we would have rather gone with you because of what we did because they didn't go there to relax on the beach. But some people want to relax on the beach, mm-hmm. and that's cool. And listen, when we went to Dumaguete, that was a cool layout, but there was people we wanted to hang out with that weren't part of the festival. So the only way to see them is to go visit them. 
Now, we actually got to spend time with Roberto at the house before he showed up to the festival. No, no. I mean, and, believe me. And we were with Bobby in Cebu, and we all came together. And uh, we got to hang out with Nick Elazar, Drago Maranga. Uh, you know, we got, to, we got to hang people from our lineage and verify mm-hmm. some things about Remy, which is cool. Just the misses would have to... Uh... Yeah. I'll sweet talk her. Say, what, what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of pool boy do you want him to bring you back? <laughs> she would be worried about the pool girls. <laughs> well, those pool girls are probably pool boys anyway. So, <laughs> on that note, let's go. <laughs> hey, listen, the best looking women in the Philippines are usually boys. I just got to be careful. That's why we, oh no, the lady boys, it's crazy. Uh, it's crazy how pretty they are. That's an area yeah. I'm not sure I want to. Uh, well, that's why we don't go there for that. Okay. I, it, it, so okay, so for here, those who uh, those here's here's the deal. I'm letting everyone know ahead of time. If you ever see, if you ever think about coming to one of our things, this is what I tell everybody: don't do anything that you don't want your family knowing about. Because if your wife or whomever asks me what happens, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm not going to lie for any of you. So. If you're married and you want to get in trouble, cheat on them and have them ask me and I will tell them what happened. So I am not going to lie for anybody. So, um, you know, I, I, only when they're serving warrants, I say they're not here. But I'm going to have to hook up there with Jay DeLone. Jay, when I go over there, Jay, you're going to have to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of you because we, yeah. we keep it training the whole time. Man, yeah, we see, we, we always see Narzo, for example. Oh, I always see Arno. Arno, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. He would be, yeah, definitely. He would be on the list for sure. Yep, the whole Aneta group there. Oh, he, he, him and um, oh, oh, I mean, we do the morning. We we'll hang out with Riddell. We'll go with uh, Henry, and we'll go with Arnold, and all yeah. one, all one afternoon. Yeah. So no, definitely, definitely. All right, hey, we gotta have our powwow, man, because I'm gonna be summoned soon. Um, yep, that's good. Well, this has been. Absolutely wonderful. I'm glad we did do the extra time addressing the uh, titles. Thank you for that reminder. Um, and we've got you coming on our show. So for those, okay. So tomorrow is the last show before our our little hiatus. Uh, yeah. It's the 24th episode of season two. We don't have the numbers that he has, but I'm gonna, you know, we're in double digits, so we're happy. Um, you don't so, want the numbers I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tomorrow is the show of uh, the 22nd about camps. Uh, we're not doing the weekend after because it's after our instructor development camp and we need a break. And then the weekend, the the Monday after that is Labor Day weekend. So, um, but then on the 12th, Dean Branco will be a special guest on ours. Uh, and then that'll, af- that'll be after our virtual seminar that we're doing. We're doing a tag team seminar yeah. on the 10th of September. But uh, Dean's visit this time will be Dean the martial artist, right? Yes, yes, we're done. We're done with having made discussion. We've invaded. <laughs> we've taken over. It's gone. There you go. <laughs> it's, but um, but now we'll have Dean Branco, the martial artist, um, because we talked about the show and we're done with the show. Yeah. It's all about you now. I'm, I'm almost done with the show. <laughs> <laughs> So that would be fun getting on there with you guys. I will always enjoy hanging out with you guys. So uh, I I expect nothing but a good time there. So all right. Um, but okay, it was a pleasure. It looks like I'm gonna drop you guys in the bottom, and then we'll yeah. have a powwow. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Catch you guys later. Yes. They much enjoyed both of you. <laughs> All right, folks, that wraps up episode 321. Who is next? Um, good question. I got uh, Chris Durbaum. I got a schedule with him. He's a Kung Tao guy out of Florida. So uh, I thought that'd be kind of neat. Get some more Kung um, <clears throat> Some uh, We've only had it Kung Tao covered once. So I thought that'd be neat. We get somebody else on there to uh, discuss that. And so if you guys know anybody else in that area, please don't hesitate to PM me on that. So hopefully that will be this week. And yes, August is coming to a wrap soon. So before we know it, we'll have September's list out there. But uh, all right, folks. Again, thank you to those who watched, commented. And actually, I don't think there were any questions, which is okay, because I had the questions. But at any rate, thank you again, and we'll see you next time.